just been evacuated. Judy Leone, Janine Frazaglia. Uh, as you can see from their face, uh, that, that is not Halloween paint. That's smoke, I assume. What happened exactly? As I understand, you're on the 25th floor. What did you yeah. see? What did you hear? I didn't see anything. I just heard a huge explosion. It felt like the whole building blew up. I just like I was sitting in my chair, and all of a sudden I just felt an explosion. I flew out of my chair, and they just made us evacuate the building within like 15 minutes. You work at an office on the 25th floor. What did you hear or see? I, I actually saw the wall shaking. I, I, my, I, I thought it was an earthquake or something. Like all the computers went off. Everything just went off. We didn't, it sounded like a bomb or a bang or something, like or a pop. I, I, I can't really explain it. How much smoke was there? There obviously was some because you're covered with it. H how much did you see and, and to what extent were you nervous about it? Um, we were on the 25th floor and going down until about, I'd say, the 10th, 10th flight. There wasn't that much smoke. From 10 all the way down to 1, you couldn't really see anything at all. And it was dark and people had flashlights and they just helped everybody out of the building. And was anybody telling you what to do? How did you know what well, to do? There was somewhat panic, but we just kept following everybody else down the stairs. Everyone was going faster, faster, and, you know, just telling everybody to cover your mouth and keep your head down. But it just kept getting darker and smokier as we further went down. Other than the smoke condition, you don't seem to be that worse for the experience. On your way down, did you pass anybody who appeared to be in worse shape? Yes. There were some people that were coming out in stretchers, but I don't know exactly what happened to them or what their condition was um as soon as out of the building they made us run away they made us all run away because they said that the glass was going to start shattering and everything so we kind of made our way up here all right bill butel wants to ask a question bill go ahead yeah i i i wanted to ask if if everybody on her floor that she knows about or that they know about has been safely evacuated Bill, they can't hear you. Bill is asking if everybody that you know about from your floor, at least, has been safely evacuated. Yeah, we checked into that. Everybody's safely on our floor. Everybody's safe on our floor, anyway. Bill, they left nobody behind. And I, I would ask you to ask them this question, too. They talked about somebody telling them that the windows were going to start breaking. Was that going to be because, why, why, why were the windows going to start breaking, according to the person who talked to them? Bill is wondering why the windows might have started to break. You mentioned that you had heard something like that. I wasn't going to stick around and ask why. <laughs> You're also cold. What did you leave with and, yeah. and without? We took everything, our pocketbooks, everything. <laughs> we knew we weren't coming back. At first, we just, you know, we were just like looking around. It was like, we should leave, we should leave. And then finally I said, I'm getting out of here because I, I saw everybody running down the stairs. Grab my pocket with grab Janine. And yeah. at that point, did you realize how bad? I mean, obviously, this is a serious New York experience. Did you know that at the time as you're getting down the, the darkened stairwell? Oh, I mean, you start to think about it, but you don't want to panic, so you just want to relax. But then we didn't think it was that bad. Like I said, the first 15 flights, then when you got down to the last 10, it was really smoky. So then I started getting nervous. I just wanted to get out. I just got really scared. It was dark. People had flashlights. People had suits on and respirators. And which is funny, we work for an asbestos company, and we have respirators, and we didn't even grab them. I don't know why. All right, Bill, uh, I think that's probably what they can add down here. Incidentally, this is not an addition to the weather report. This snow you see blowing across is because the police helicopter, yet another one, is now landing in a field immediately adjacent, and it's stirring up the snow. So on top of everything else here, uh, we're getting a, a snow drift uh, as well. All right, Tim, thank you very much. We're going now to Alan Shanning, who is president, I'm told, of the Beekman Downtown Hospital, is that correct, Mr. Shanning? New York Downtown. New York Downtown, I'm sorry. Uh, you have some, uh, some casualties there? About 10 minutes ago, the count was uh, roughly 10 patients, one of whom had uh, gone on to surgery. I can't tell you the extent of that person's injuries at this time. What types of we injuries are you seeing? additional patients who uh, turned out to be six months pregnant who were being evaluated by our obstetrical staff. Mr. Channing, what kinds of injuries are these people coming in with? Is it mostly smoke inhalation or are there also cuts? It, uh, it looks like some of the patients have, have actually some injuries that have caused some bleeding. It's hard to tell the extent of that. Um, what we're doing at this point is triaging the patients as quickly as they're brought into the emergency room and then making sure that a physician is assigned to each one and uh, taking care of them from that point forward. We are prepared to deal with a number of patients with smoke inhalation. Now, you, know, you use the word triage. That means you are treating the most seriously injured first, correct? That's correct. And uh, were there anybody burned? Well, I personally have not seen anybody uh, in that situation. It's hard to tell at this moment. Are you, are, are you prepared for this kind of an emergency as routine? Each hospital 
puts together a, an emergency disaster program. Uh, we've recently revised ours, and this is unfortunately an excellent opportunity to try it. The, the staff responds instantly when an announcement is made uh, that there is a, an emergency and a disaster either internally or externally to the hospital. For this particular case, what this resulted in was all the medical and nursing staff concentrating uh, their attention in the emergency department, the rapid establishment of a, a sorting spot or a triage area, and ancillary sites being set up for uh, patients to be staged awaiting other activities. Uh, Mr. Shanning, uh, we're looking at a live picture now, which you cannot see, I presume. Uh, but we're looking at a live picture of a police helicopter. Now, would there be, in that situation, any need for helicopter evacuation of ill people to, uh, or injured people to uh, area hospitals? At, at this point, it, it doesn't appear so, although that possibility might exist. You were talking about um, surgery going on, and you didn't know exactly what kind of surgery was being done on one of the people brought in. That raises the question, were any of the people unconscious when they were brought to your hospital? I don't have that information. Well, you're, you are waiting for more more casualties, one presumed? That's correct. We were notified that it could be up to 100. Up to 100? That, that there would be one, up to 100 brought to you or up to 100 injured? Up to 100 injured. Uh, I, I suspect moved around to the various other, the various hospitals all around the area down there, right? Not all of them will go to New York down there. That's correct. From the EMS that up to 150 people were injured and that they were trying to stabilize people on the spot and then transport them to hospitals. We now have Richard Molieri on the phone. She is with Con Ed. Uh, Mr. Molieri, thanks for joining us. Can you tell us what is happening from what you've heard? We have just uh, recently been requested by the fire department to cut off all service, uh, including gas, electric, and steam to the entire World Trade Center complex. Uh, we, as a result of the explosion, we've lost five out of uh, our eight feeder cables provide service to the complex. Uh, we, however, at this time have no reason to believe that uh, the cause of the explosion uh, was any of kind of its facilities. Uh, this is the preliminary information. Everything uh, uh, operated as it is uh, designed to operate uh, until shortly after the explosion. We heard that one of your transformer substations might have been involved in either explosion or fire in some way. Is that correct or not? I don't have a confirmation on that as yet, and uh, again, we are uncertain whether the initial uh, incident caused the transformer problem, if there is in fact one. Um, what, would you explain for me and the listeners what the feeder cables do? You said you've lost five of eight. Where do they come from? Where do they go to? What is their function? The feeder cables, these are 13 kilovolt feeder cables, which provide uh, electric service to the World Trade Center complex. We have a total of eight of them which provide electric service. Uh, they come from a substation uh, that is underground at the World Trade Center complex. And uh, as a result of the explosion, uh, actually one, one of the eight were out of service and uh, four others uh, tripped open when the explosion occurred. This may be an obvious question, but why the request to cut off the gas electricity in the uh, very fear? simply, fire and gas don't mix very well if the circumstances are not controlled, such as uh, in a stove or a uh, furnace uh, yeah. providing heat. Uh, what we don't want to do is have uh, additional explosions. If there are still fire in the building uh, and another explosion that might cause a gas pipe to break or a uh, electrical cable to uh, for the insulation to be burned off an electric cable uh, further complicating the situation. We had heard that the fire had been confined to a sub-ground area, to a sub-basement area, actually. And have you heard anything different than that? Is there still a concern that that fire may spread upward? I have not heard anything, uh, and probably the best people to inform you about that is the fire department. Let me ask you this, Mr. McMillan. Yes. Um, early on, it was said that it might have involved a Con Ed substation safety areas you can do that or if you have to use some heavy a paperweight anything I, that'll break those windows I don't cut yourself are you, sure, are you sure they will break yes they will they're yes. breaking on other John. floors yes. oh, okay good 
stay safe and uh, stay with us, John. I'm going to keep the line open, please. Yeah, thank you. I'm here. I don't have very much else to do. Okay. Let's go to Channel 2's Brian Williams. He has just arrived at the scene. Brian, give us the lay of the land from your vantage. All right, I am between World Trade Centers 4 and 5. Uh, the, the pictures speak uh, better than any description I could give you. Lower Manhattan is just purely bedlam. Uh, every other vehicle is an emergency vehicle. As Lisa Castleman mentioned in our first live report from the scene, every other person has soot on their face. People are walking around here having just made the trek that we've been talking about live on the air, the, the hundred plus story trip all the way down. Stairwells are jammed with people. Everyone is choking. Uh, as far as I can tell, everyone who's had so much as a moment's exposure to this smoke uh, is having respiratory problems with it. Uh, we, uh, we have some, uh, we got here early enough to talk to some folks who had just made it down to an EMS triage center where they were being treated. And uh, let's take a look at that now. We were stuck in the elevator for about 15 minutes. It seemed like a lot of smoke. The doors were closed. We just tried to get the door open a little bit, and then they came and got us. We were on 50. What's going on and still wanting to get where they're going, but it's, it's causing a problem for not only the firemen, but for the cops. Police who are obviously trying to keep some sort of order. Okay, Gary, we've had a lot of conflicting reports or some confusing reports about exactly what caused this explosion. Can you recap what you have heard so far about the cause of this? I tell you, uh, to be honest with you, Elizabeth, um, I went into the area where the where the people were. I'm not going to be able to bring you any any new information. I was just able to get in there, talk to a few people, uh, talk to a few fire officials at the scene. They basically knew less than I did. They were just there to try to, um, you know, just try to help the situation, help to put out whatever or to maintain some sort of order that, uh, that's outside right now as far as fire officials are concerned. The ones I talked to were basically backing up. Anybody who was aware of what's going on is either in the building or closer to where they would allow me to go. Okay, Gary Anthony Ramsey at the scene of uh, an explosion, fire, mayhem at the World Trade Center. Gary described to us a scene of pandemonium. Here's what we know so far. There are two fires burning, fires apparently caused by an explosion in the past train station. That explosion led to a ceiling collapse. We spoke to one man who was working in the train station who was actually hit by pieces of the ceiling, uh, luckily uninjured. But the explosion has caused two fires. We don't have word yet on the status of those fires. Uh, witnesses we're speaking to on the phone say they can't see any flames. It's very hard for them to see the activity of the firefighters, but there is still apparently thick black smoke billowing out of three World Trade Center where there's a five alarm fire burning and two World Trade Center where there is apparently a three alarm building. We have had reports that, the, that some people working in those buildings have gone up to the roof of the buildings to get air. Apparently a lot of people having trouble with smoke inhalation. Um, so Coughing, so uh, press that. To you in a few minutes, I'm sure, all right? Now let's go back up to the, I think it's the 91st, 96th, yeah. 95th, I believe. 95th floor. John Eckstein, are you still with us? ...hospital uh, working to help people. There are a lot of reports of traumatized people, not necessarily... I'll tell you what, do you, you have a second? I'll go out and look. Do you? Huh. I can go out. I don't think it's getting any worse, but let me um, just John, stay here. Yeah. Wait, you wait one second because we have some yeah, very John, important information. John, we just spoke to the fire people. I said to you, you could break windows. I want to take that back for a moment, okay? Yeah. Here's the deal. Yeah. When you're in a fire situation like yours, before help arrives and you're, you're in bad shape, which obviously you're not, no, you would break fine. the windows to get air. But in this case, you're okay. You don't have to break the window because the fire guys are going up and heading up your way. More important is that since all these rescue crews are around the building, mm. breaking windows will oh send boy. glass down into the street. Oh, boy, yeah. So you don't want to do that. But you're in no trouble right now, are you? No. Okay. Oh, we then if the smoke gets heavier or you have a problem, get low. Okay. And that's the best you can do because right, they are on their way. Okay. Get down on, if you have to lie down on the floor and relax. You yep. can breathe. That's where the oxygen will be in that place, if there's any at all. And obviously, the heavy stuff hasn't gotten up as high as you, because there are probably the lower floors where windows are broken are venting out that smoke. Yep. The fear is, if you break windows now, not only will the glass descend on the street on passerbys going by, 
but it also act as a as a as a drafting agent pulling get, up the smoke into your area. Up here, yeah. John. So hang on, and I'm sure you'll be okay. Okay. Um, that's good, good luck to you, John. Good well, luck. Thank, thank you very much, all. Frank, you often hear uh, Jim mention it before about wetting some type of cloth. What's the importance of that? Is that well, any good? To get that toxic to smoke in the yes, soot. Sir. Smoke and soot gets into your lungs, you begin to cough, you mm -hmm. breathe more. This way, you're using a filter. Mm -hmm. the, I, I tell you, the one saving grace that I find here at this point is in talking to everyone at the different floors, what surprises me is that the ventilation system, which is out, fortunately, because of the power, isn't pumping that smoke in throughout every room in the building. It seems to be coming through the elevator shaft, which is acting as right. a flu. interrupt for a moment. Uh, Captain Curry of the fire department is on the line. He's going to talk to John yes, Eckstein. Yes. John, Captain Curry is going to talk to you now. Hello, Captain. Oh, yes. Can you hear me? Sure, I can. Yeah, okay. I, I was just... I told them to tell you not to break the windows. Only do that as a very last resort. We understand, Put uh, wet towels at the bottom of the door. Stay low. And the fire is being extinguished, so the, the smoke will get a lot less as it goes. Yeah, we don't have a big problem up here so far. Would you advise us to wet some stuff and... and um and close off the small openings to the doors? Yeah, if, if it gets any worse. But uh, breaking the windows will draw the smoke towards you. Yeah, and it won't do the people on the ground any good either. You're liable to kill people in the street. No, we, right. uh, so I would advise you not to do that. Okay, so now you're putting out the fire? No, no, I'm up at the front. No, I, I saw mean, Frank Field's report on television. No, no, I mean, uh, I didn't you, it. you said that you thought that the fire was getting under control. How many fires are there, by the way? There's one in each building, from what I can hear from the radio. One in, one in two, one in three? I think so, just from what I heard on our radio. Captain okay. Curry? Yes. Captain Jim Jensen here. Do you know anything about PCB involvement because of that transformer? Well, it is a, it is a transformer. That's always a possibility. Mm -hmm. I don't think they know yet whether it is or not. Mm -hmm. okay. And as far as you know, the fires are not under control at this point? Well, they're not under control, no. Okay. But they, they could be extinguished and yet not be under control. I don't know at this right, time. Right, right. And again, to reiterate, people should wait for firefighters to get to them, correct? Before breaking windows, yes. Okay, well, we understand that um, okay. the window breaking activity will be only a, a matter of desperation. All right. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank right. you. And thank we, you. We and can thank still get you. out. Captain, if you could hang on the line with us here. Now let's go back to John Kuhn. John, I believe you were on the 31st floor? 51st. 51st floor. How are you doing? You have a lot of smoke. Okay, we have a lot of smoke. Now, a strange thing happened. Some people from this floor tried to go down the stairwells, but my colleagues from the 64th floor have now made it to this office area. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a debate going on. People are breaking windows, and they're concerned about the chattering glass going down to the street. Captain, jump in. Captain Curry, you hear this? I'm sorry, I can hardly hear you. Okay, we have some people breaking windows. We're on the 51st floor. Now, there's a concern about the falling glass. Yes. Uh, what floor are you on? 51. Did you advise anyone that you were there? Uh, I told them to stop it. Okay, but I mean, did you advise the fire department that you were on 51? No, they did do the fire department. Okay, I'll, I'll notify them. What, uh, which building? We're in number one World Trade Center. I'm facing West Street. Facing West Street. Right, I'm looking right down at the Winter Garden where the overpass is. And okay. the smoke is heavy? It's still about the same. It hasn't increased any. Which is heavy, though. Yeah, it's heavy. Matter. You can only see about 20 feet. Okay, I'll relay that to, to our dispatcher and they'll notify them at the scene. Captain? Thank you. Yes. Tell us what it is like for the firefighters trying to handle all of this, the fire, getting people out of there. What is the responsibility of the firefighters here? Well, part of, part of the uh, attack is to attack the fire and put that out. That's mm -hmm. the initial strategy. And mm -hmm. the truck companies are making surges in all the stairwells and the floors above the fire. It's just that it's such a large building, it's uh, very difficult. Okay. Captain, could I ask you a question? Frank Field here. Yes. How do you want people in those buildings to notify the fire department where they are if they have no access, they can't get through a 911, they can't open windows and hang towels out or indicate there are 50 people on this floor? For example, you're surprised to find out that we have somebody on the 51st floor uh, or on the 91st floor that's trapped and you're going to notify the fire department. How can we get directly to yes. your folks? Uh, 911 is your best bet. And okay, I can't if get through a 911. If they're not in through. serious danger, uh, don't tie up the lines. I would say save that for when it becomes critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if we find somebody on one floor that tells us they're trapped on that floor, how do we notify you? Who do we go to? You would have to call them a Manhattan dispatcher. Okay. 
Okay, do we have that number? In well, we'll call Captain Curry in the okay. Bronx. Thank you, Captain. Thank you very much. And you're going to notify uh, your people about uh, Mr. Kuhn trapped in the 51st floor, correct? Yes, I'll notify this one. Captain Thank Curry, you. thanks very much. Thank you. Right now, no. let's uh, go to our newsroom. Carol Martin yes. has uh, some late information for us. Carol? Okay. All right, Dana, thank you. Yes, our information's coming in as quickly as you're getting it, and I'll bring you the latest on what we have, at least on injuries. Five people, according to the last wire copy, which came in just about five minutes ago, have been hospitalized, 25 treated for injuries at the scene, although, as you can tell from our pictures, there are so many more still in need of help. The injury total is expected to climb to at least 150 as more people come down from the towers slowly. Now, many of the injured, we are told, have been taken to St. Vincent's Hospital, also Beekman Hospital downtown, and Beth Israel Medical Center, all of which have geared up their emergency uh, um, uh, areas for this tragedy. Now, we're trying to get to ascertain exactly what is still open and what is not. As you probably heard, Con Edison did shut off all electricity to all five of the buildings that are the World Trade Center complex just about half an hour ago, and that is why, as you heard from your eyewitnesses, they said that they were losing their lights and the like. So they are probably not seeing us unless they have battery-operated televisions. <clears throat> but it is important that they know uh, we're trying to uh, ascertain also what to do if your loved ones or a friend's work down in the area. We'll try to get that information for you. Of course, Senator Brian Williams is standing by at the scene now. We want to pick up his report. Brian? All right, Carol, uh, uh, I've just, I'm on top of a television truck, which is why this angle looks strange, and I'm going to snake the microphone down to a man. How many floors did you just come down? 105. What's it like? How long did your trip take? Uh, it took about, what, an hour? An hour, ten, an hour, ten minutes. It was moving at first, uh, stairwell filled up with smoke, no announcements. It flattened out to a hallway on 70 when probably was the scariest. We weren't moving, it was getting smokier, uh, a lot of carbon in the smoke, and uh, I don't know, it didn't look good. Uh, people collapsed. Yeah. So we, what was the condition of the people on the way? Very, very smoky. Some people had asked, oh, there was a pregnant woman, we tried to get down the stairs ahead of us. But at this point, we're uh, just glad to be downstairs, and uh, I'd love to chat, but we're heading for the nearest bar. <laughs> Understood. Uh, a few uh, people finding uh, some solace uh, in the area taverns, but uh, there you hear the kind of stories you hear in this region uh, all over the place. People just coming down from these long, long treks, an hour and a half, 105 stories, uh, and, and the, the, uh, the crowd is sprinkled with people with similar stories to tell. Absolutely extraordinary from Lower Manhattan. Brian, has anybody said anything about fire drills and if they were prepared for something like this? Frankly, we haven't had time to ask. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that, uh, obviously, by law, uh, given structures this extraordinary mm -hmm. size, it's supposed to be something uh, gone over and over and over. But right. as you can see, these people just loosened their ties. That they came down with whatever they had on their backs, and they are uh, they're happy to be out of here. And, uh, and uh, well, here now we have some uh, well-wishers, but uh, uh, the crisis atmosphere definitely still exists here in Lower Manhattan. Brian, any uh, reports of people, in a sense, fighting their way down the stairwell and pushing other people out of the way? Well, we have, uh, I'll tell you, that the, the first-hand accounts we've received, Jim, uh, are that people are uh, being quite helpful. People have used the word panic sparingly. Uh, you just heard live that account of a pregnant woman, of an asthma mm -hmm. patient, and boy, uh, that's a situation you don't want to be in. Uh, but I don't think there's much... Uh, 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 ill spirit here as there is we're all in this together in typical New York uh, style when anything awful happens. Hopefully, hopefully that's the case. We yep. must pass on this information, uh, Brian, while you stay there with us, is that the police have asked uh, everyone to refrain from calling 911 if the system is entirely clogged and it's not workable right now, mm -hmm. so don't add to it. Now, Brian, yeah. you have anything more for us from where you are? Uh, only that... Uh, thousands keep crowding out again to uh, to go over our uh, location again. We're between uh, World Trade Center 5 and World Trade Center 4. Uh, people are not being given any information. Mm -hmm. As many people as I see go by our live camera location here who are totally covered with soot, mm -hmm. uh, for every one of them there's someone asking me, what happened? What happened? Yeah. Uh, it's extraordinary. You know, the, the business of New York tries to continue. Uh, a, a lot of uh, couriers and uh, Federal Express uh, delivery people wondering just what's going on. And people continue to look up at the World Trade Center towers. We can't say this often enough. If you can't see them from your apartment, don't come to Lower Manhattan. Nothing is uh, is to be seen uh, visually from the outside. Brian, uh, I'm thinking about those uh, guys you talked to who said they just came down more than 100 floors, a pregnant woman. I mean, if you had any other type of health problems, 
you know, you'd be so frightened coming down there. Absolutely, and, and people uh, keep uh, counting the floors coming down. I don't know if any of us can really conceive of this, mm -hmm. uh, what it's like to uh, make a 100-floor-plus trek and uh, what you see on your way down. Uh, absolutely extraordinary stories, as you might imagine, uh, uh, coming out of this crowd. Uh, let me see uh, one more gentleman here. How many stories did you... Uh, don't, come on over here. 82, 105. You were on the 105th floor as well. Uh, what did you see on the way down as far as well, people, we, what we were working? <laughs> we heard like a boom, and then the lights went out for a second, and they came back on, and then they just told us to get out. And the smoke started going up. Now, and, and any people helping other people? I mean, what, what was it like? People had asthma attacks. Asthma, a lot of asthma trees, A lot of pregnant women coming down. Anybody telling you what the problem is on your way down? No, getting no, 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 Brian? Uh, Jim Jensen, go ahead. Brian, uh, could you ask them if they, if they ever had any fire drills? Uh, we're, we're curious, were there, were there fire drills where you work on a regular basis? Yes, yes. yes. no fire alarm went on at all. So, so you're sitting in your office and you feel an explosion? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Actually, it was two explosions. Two explosions. Up that high, okay. it's explosions, Brian? Mm -hmm. Two explosions. That seems to be quite mm -hmm. common. A lot of people saying the same thing. Uh, two separate explosions. Uh, again, uh, you know, uh, every other person in the crowd. Brian? Yes, sir. Frank you want to come on over? He has somebody else now. Hang on, hang on Frank. We're going to get a, 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 some official uh, viewpoint here as soon as he gets off his cell phone. Well, Brian, uh, while he's on the phone, can I ask you to ask him a question? Sure. Okay. Do, are they all doing this on their own, or did they have somebody, a fire warden, tell them to evacuate? How are they proceeding? Okay. There's supposed to be somebody on every floor to give instructions what how to are, do. How are people coming down? Did you have help, or is it just get in the stairwell and hope for the best? Get in the stairwell, hope for the best from 105 to like 99. Okay, so the first, uh, first official you saw was at 60? Yeah, that's, that's 60. All right, Frank, the answer to your question, 40 floors before you see anyone of any authority. We're waiting here. For the city, I'm fine. Who okay. is that, Brian? We're waiting for an official with the uh, NYFD to uh, brief us. He's getting information on his cell phone. I'm hanging off the end of a television truck, and as soon as he's off the phone, if you can afford to stay with us yes. here, yes, we will. we'll tell you what he's learning and uh, nope. try to... You know what, Brian? No words yet from that plat path platform down beneath the building where no, it all started. Uh, uh, maybe this gentleman will shed some light uh, on that. Uh, Having a few uh, signal problems there. Again, this happened right. about 12:18 this afternoon. An explosion at the transformer at World Three World Trade Center. Okay. Go ahead, Brian. We're yeah. ready to go here. Uh, you, know, you and I have known each other for some time. For our viewers who don't, identify yourself. Uh, hi, Brian. I'm Richard Brower. I'm the president of the Fire Officers Union here. Uh, All right, Richard. What can you tell us? You've got a lot of your members uh, obviously at work. Uh, we're at a, la a lack for a lot of official information. Well, from what we've gotten, there's just three separate fires, uh, unconfirmed at this point. We have uh, units operating in the cellar of the World Trade Center in, uh, in Building 1. Uh, we have uh, problems with the path. Uh, I've just seen Jersey City Fire Department units come down uh, West Broadway. We have uh, uh, Brooklyn units in, involved. We have a uh, transmitted fourth alarm for the uh, for one World Trade Center, transmitted third alarm for number three World Trade Center. A lot of it has to do with evacuation and uh, and locating the, uh, the initial fires. I think we have more than one uh, fire right now. Now, what about uh, drills on this stuff? And, and, and shouldn't people be in the stairwells helping the folks down or? Well, uh, you know, the, uh, if the fire can be uh, located quickly enough and, and uh, confined and extinguished, it's really not necessary to evacuate the whole building. If they start to lose control of the fire, then of course we have to evacuate. We have, we have, uh, we have different evacuation stairways and we have different evacuation procedures. 
Uh, but right now, they're making headway with the fire, so uh, there's no need to evacuate the whole building. All right, uh, so that's, uh, Brian? Uh, yes. Could you ask Richard, please, any PCV involvement from the transmitter that he knows of? We've been curious, uh, since this started, any involvement with PCBs? You know, there have been ongoing reports that it was a transformer. Well, with any transformer, there's always the problem with PCBs. We'll, 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 we'll check all the firefighters and fire officers when they come out and, uh, and have them checked and have anybody who exposed to PCBs. We, ha we haven't had any reports of that. And right now, we have a difficulty with, uh, uh, we have a uh, second alarm going in Queens right now, and we have uh, other multiple fires that were pretty well stretched in. Okay, thank you. And uh, one uh, brief word before we throw it back. Uh, in lay terms, PCBs happen when the hot oil inside transformers, right. the kind we see on uh, telephone poles, when that uh, explodes and drops out, that has been uh, 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 exposed to large amounts of electricity, thus the uh, cancer-causing PCB agents. You'll hear a lot of talk about that today and the subsequent days. Back to you in the studio. Brian, okay. thank you. Thanks. We now Brian. have some tape, as I've been told, of the interior of the World Trade Center. Exactly which building, I'm not sure. Perhaps it's Building 3, uh, where the four-alarm fire was reported because of the, of the transformer explosion. Um, People obviously having trouble breathing. On the telephone with us is Isaiah Rivera. We spoke with him before. He's on the 110th floor. Isaiah, are you okay? Yeah, I'm here. You're still up there. Yes, I'm here. You're still up there. I'm here all by myself now. Uh, police officer Sergeant Fowl just went out to make a floor survey to find all the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm in the dark except for the emergency lights. And there's another technician, Alex Acevedo from Channel 31st, 31. He is giving the police officer the tour because he doesn't know the floor. It's completely dark. We cannot see. I'm here. It's the best area to be right now. Uh, Terry Matut, uh, she was taken out by uh, another person. I believe she went out somewhere to take fresh air somewhere. Mm -hmm. She is pregnant, and uh, uh, we made sure that she went out first. It's important for us to say to you and to say to anybody else who has the possibility of hearing us right now, if you are in one of the troubled World Trade Center buildings, to stay put and wait for emergency help to get to you before you try to go down on your own. Right, that's why I'm still here. I put an air pack on, on me and I'm breathing. I use this for breathing, but mm -hmm. so far it's, it's better in here than the outside. Okay. It's very dark and I uh, can't see anything. Okay. Do you know how difficult it was for the police sergeant to walk his way all the way up to the 110th floor, did he say? Well, he says to, uh, he, he did pretty good. Uh, he didn't have no oxygen mask or anything, but they just run in here. They knock on the doors and we open the door right away. Mm -hmm. How he got here, I think it was the stairway was open. Yes. Isaiah, stay yes. safe. Uh, thank you for hanging on the phone with us. Okay, the police is here again. now again. Yeah, okay. they're just walking in here now. I don't know what okay, the status is. Now back, thank Isaiah very much. Good luck to you. Take good care. Bye-bye. Now back to Lisa Castleman on the street. Lisa. Jim, we're outside the building right now where several of the ambulances are parked and many of the people which you can see behind me are being treated, given oxygen, and many of them of course are being given blankets because they came out without their uh, coats and they're very cold. This area here has been like this for about an hour and there's never been an empty seat, not even for a second. Many, most of the people coming out, even those who were breathing, continued to need additional uh, oxygen. Lisa, what are they complaining of? The trouble breathing? What are any kind of irritation? What else? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that again, please? What are the people who are being treated saying is wrong? How do they That's feel? That's okay. How do they feel? She can't hear. All right, we understand. We, we spoke with many of the people who had come out. This is what they had to say about their experience inside. Okay. The whole building shook. And then the lights went out, so we had to walk out to the 31st floor. a big exploding bomb. It seemed like it was a bomb like that. But the guy was near me was get really, really hot. Then he couldn't do nothing. I tried to pick him up like that. Then all my clothes get bloody. Then I run up and tell the other people that tell made an ambulance. Did you have difficulty breathing for a while? Uh, yes, the smoke was very black and, and very thick. And thank goodness we had uh, water in the office, so we wet handkerchiefs and it helped. Go, but going down the stairs, you know, there was smoke. You went down the stairwell? Yes. 
but it's fine. It's getting better now. But we had to wait over an hour in the office before we could go down. What was that like having to wait, not fully understanding what it happened? It was scary. It was scary, yes. As you can see, the big problem in this immediate area right here is keeping the area clear so the ambulances can get in and out and give the people the help that they need. Of course, it's freezing out here. Many of the people who came out had nothing to keep themselves warm. The ambulances are providing them uh, with blankets as well. And these ambulances, I'm sure you can see a few here, they are, are lined up for the block as far back as I can possibly see. Lisa. And uh, we'll pan over and show you what it looks like. Lisa? Lisa? Okay, we're going to continue to stay on the scene here. We'll have more for you later. Back to the studio. Uh, Lisa, can you hear me all right? Yes, yes vaguely. Yes. Is that you, Jim? Oh, yes, can you hear me? I'll try to speak as clearly and slowly as possible. Uh, what about reports of people being trapped on the path platform when the ceiling came down. Supposedly the platform was filled with a lot of people. Do you know anything about that at all? Not from this area where I'm standing. I have not heard about that specific part of the incident. Okay, okay. thank you, Lisa, very Thanks, much. Please, sir. We have video of, from inside of people being rescued from the World Trade Center. Let's take a look at that. Again, you know these are places where thousands of people work and tough, tough chore for firefighters to get in there and for, of course, people to get out there safely. It's dark, electricity went off. Yes, smoke. We've got the smoke. And the unknown, just the unknown. Fear of the unknown. Yeah. We have some phone numbers. Because 911 is jammed up. These are numbers to use instead of 911. Let's put those up on the screen. No, they're not ready yet. We'll okay. get those for right. you in right. a second. Right. Now imagine coming down this building. Oh. It's a, a dark staircase. You're scared to death. It's full of smoke. You can't breathe properly. You don't know what the next floor is going to present to you. I mean, it's terrifying is the unknown, not being able to see and the difficulty of breathing. Well, and also, when 911, which you always uh, know is there, right. is jammed. But here are some phone numbers that we've been given by the police and fire department for information. The number at the beginning, 212-374-2303. For the fire department, 212-999-2222 and 212-999-3333. You know, one of the interesting things... Oh, just a minute, Frank. Just a we have Richard Molieri from Con Ed on the phone. Richard? Hi, Jim. How are you? Fine. How are you doing? Oh, we're hanging in here. <sighs> what, what can you describe for us? What have you been doing? What do you have to do? Uh, we have been requested by the fire department to uh, shut down the electric service to the entire World Trade Center complex, which uh, we accomplished at 1.32 p.m. Uh, we will also, or, or rather are also working right now to shut down the gas and steam service as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we have no reason to believe at this point that the cause of the explosion was uh, any of Con Edison's facilities. All our equipment uh, operated as it is designed to do. Uh, there were, however, five feeder cables, electric feeder cables, that were knocked out by the explosion, which uh, now, since service has been shut off, is a moot issue. Uh, we have a total of 16 transformers in the complex, all of which are air-cooled, so there are no PCBs uh, in the transformers. So your, your transformer is not the one that blew? Uh, I, no, I don't know if it is or it is not. Uh, okay. What we do know, however, is the transformers we do have at the complex are not cooled by uh, oil, which contains PCBs. Rich? Some people may not know what a transformer is. Describe that for us. Okay, a transformer is a piece of equipment which steps down the voltage of electric current. The, uh, the feeder cables into the World Trade Centers are 13 uh, kilovolt uh, uh, feeders, 13,000 kilovolt feeders. Mm -hmm. uh, that high a voltage is not usable for things like uh, PCs and other office equipment. It goes through a transformer which steps down the voltage to a mm -hmm. uh, level like uh, 120 volts that is used in, in homes and offices mm -hmm. for various pieces of equipment. Uh, do you have transformers on the station platform, the PATH station platform? Uh, I do not know if uh, we do. There probably are some, uh, whether they're the Port Authorities or Con Edison's, I'm not sure. I don't believe there are. Uh, have, you, have you been on that platform personally? Do you know what it looks like? I have been down there and worked at the Trade Center for a number of years. Uh, What's it like? It looks uh, sort of like a normal terminal of a subway station. There are uh, several tracks down there where mm -hmm. the path trains come in. And, and what's the ceiling like, do you know? I didn't look up at the ceiling when I was down there, Jim. Mm -hmm. 
Richard. Okay. Rich, Thank you, Rich. Mark. I didn't hear you when, when you described the ceiling. I was being interrupted. Oh, no, I, I couldn't describe it for you. Uh, I, I haven't been down there in a number of years and uh, don't recall what the ceiling looks like. As far as you know, none of your transformers have any PCB involvement at all. So that eliminates that would eliminate that. That's as far correct. as you know. Yes. Okay. Rich, thanks very much for You're your welcome. information. We have those phone numbers again. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that everybody knows the... Especially people inside the building. Yes, those last two numbers watching. especially. If you are inside the building and you can hear us now, the numbers that you should call... I know, there's no electricity. Yeah, powers oh, no, maybe they, they can't can be watching. Call. Well, yeah. somebody, somebody might have, home. yeah. All right, 212-999-2222. 3333, the two fire department numbers, the first number you see, NYPD, 212 374 2303. We're going back inside now to a Joe Demick who says he's trapped inside. Joe, do you hear me? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, where are you? We're on the 87th floor, and right now we're all on the east side of the building. We're all, who is we're all? How many people? We have about 60 or 70 people on this floor. And what are their conditions? Uh, everybody's in pretty good shape. We're sticking together. Most of the smoke started on the west side and has seeped over to our side now. We lost all power, so we don't have any power now. We are listening to the radio on some battery-operated radio. To hear Joe, have you on. notified the fire authorities? Have you been able to make contact? You made contact with us. Have you told the fire folks that you're up there? No, we were told by our security that they're doing a floor-by-floor -floor evacuation mm -hmm. and that we will be contacted. Well, you have security with you then? Uh, they came through, yes, because we occupy floors from 77 through 93. Great. So everyone is calm? Yes, they are. We're not breaking windows or anything like that. Any smoke in your area? Yes, there is smoke in the area. And what we've done is we've all huddled in the closed rooms mm -hmm. because out in the open areas there is smoke throughout the floor. Well, you have a closed room within a large office complex. Right. That's correct. Great. So you, we, in other we, words, you've sealed off from the smoke. That's correct. From the beginning, we closed all the offices so that we can contain some of the fresh air in here, and so people have been staying in the offices. And you're staying low, I hope. That's correct. And breathing is pretty good. Yeah, so far, so good. Great. Okay. okay? You can stay there for several hours if necessary, right? With no sure. problem. Sure, we could. Great. Right, good. Thanks. Good to hear that. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. You're very welcome. Okay, bye-bye. Before we get to Frank, yes. uh, Mary Murphy is uh, also in Lower Manhattan. One of the hospitals. Hospital, yes. Mary, reports on injuries. Mary? Mary? It's very hard to hear you because okay. of okay. all the truck activity Go down ahead. here, but I can tell you we're at downtown Beekman Hospital, the emergency room entrance. We were the first reporters actually to get here about an hour and a half ago when the first patient was brought in. You see that there are stretchers lined up, oxygen tanks on the ground. We're told that there are more than 40 people who were taken here from the World Trade Center. <coughs> Many of them were suffering from smoke inhalation. Many had lacerations. We did see blood all over their face, on their legs. There is a third of the staff from Beekman downtown working right now on these patients. They are expecting more people to come in. The staff here numbers about 800, so you can imagine the manpower that's involved in the emergency operations. Uh, we have camera people here who saw relatives. One lady started crying as she was shooting the videotape. She said she saw her boyfriend's father among the injured. He didn't seem to be as badly injured as some of the other people. People gasping for breath as they were brought off the ambulance, smoke and soot all over their face, blackened on their face. We spoke also to a man who was not that badly injured who said he was in the sub-basement level, level two, near the parking lot. And he said the people were on their lunch hour, about 150 people, carpenters and mechanics who worked there. And he said it was just like a bomb went off. Another woman working up on the 31st floor, a chef in the cafeteria, she likened it also to a bomb. She said the windows started cracking. And this man that I spoke to initially said, that there were walls coming down. He saw the people trying to pick their way out of the chunks of concrete. So we've been standing by waiting for updates from the hospital public relations person. The latest information is that there are more than 40 people here at Beekman Hospital. The whole building shook and then the lights went out. So we had to walk out from the 31st floor. It was one more chase center. We had a big exploding bomb. It seemed like it was a bomb like that. But the guy was near me was really hot. 
then he couldn't do nothing. I tried to pick him up like that. Then all my clothes get bloody. Then I run up and tell the other people that we need an ambulance. Did you have difficulty breathing for a while? Uh, yes, the smoke was very black and, and very thick. And thank goodness we had uh, water in the office, so we wet handkerchiefs and it helped. Go, was going down the stairs, you know, there was smoke. You went down the stairwell? Yes. But it's fine. It's getting better now. But we had to wait over an hour in the office before we could go down. What was that like having to wait and not fully understanding what it happened? scary. It was scary, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, that report from correspondent Mary Murphy was at uh, Bickman Downtown Hospital, which went into an emergency mode as soon as it received news of the fire and explosion at the World Trade Center. And obviously, what, from what Mary said, she said people were escaping chunks of concrete. It seemed to me they may have been the people who were on that path train platform, and the chunks of concrete may have been part of the ceiling coming down on them. Now, for more on this as yet developing story. Mm -hmm. Carol Martin in the Channel 2 newsroom. Carol? Okay, Jim, thank you. We are still getting word that the fire department is trying to put down those fires. Also word that apparently we may be one of the only stations on the air in our tri-state area because so many of the television stations have their, trans their, their, their engineering operations based in the World Trade Center complex. And so apparently there has been total disruption on almost all of the stations. We happen to be based out of the Empire State Building. So that is why we can still come to you two hours now into this tragedy. Now I got to tell you a few other things about uh, the way the city is starting to react, needless to say, tying itself up because of all that is going on downtown. It has a lot to do with traffic, it has a lot to do with trying to get down and around that area. Now there are street closings being announced, also we are anticipating a briefing that is expected shortly at the World Trade Center Command Center. In the meantime, we can tell you that once again the Manhattan-bound Brooklyn Battery Tunnel is closed until further notice. The FDR Drive southbound has now been closed. The West Side Highway in both directions is closed in the lower Manhattan area, but needless to say, if you're coming down from upstate or from the north, you should get off the highway because it will start bottlenecking. The Guanus Expressway leading into the Prospect Expressway has been opened only to emergency vehicles, and all side streets leading into West Street, which is, of course, at the hub of the World Trade Center complex, all of the side streets in that area are closed. Needless to say, as Brian and all of our correspondents down the area have been telling you, no one needs to try to get around that area except emergency vehicles. Now, once again, we're hearing that uh, the numbers are starting to go up in terms of injuries. Fire officials reporting at least 150 people hurt. Of course, that number may rise according to the pictures we're seeing. Beekman Hospital reporting about 50 injuries, mostly smoke inhalation. You see everyone, of course, with so much soot and smoke, all uh, the indications of that as they come out of the trade centers. St. Vincent's Hospital and Beth Israel Medical Center also receiving the injured. We don't have exact numbers. We're trying to get information for you if you have friends or relatives working in the area as to how you would best go about learning if someone is okay if you haven't heard from them. The hospital switchboards are jammed. People are calling us here at the newsroom to try to get information, so we will try to get back to you with that. We should also tell you that um, so many of the co commodities exchanges and the mercantile exchanges closed at about 1.30 this afternoon, um, all of the commodity markets, which happened to share the building at 4 World Trade Center, closed at about 1.30 because of smoke conditions on the trading floor. Now, that would include the New York Mercantile Exchange, the Coffee, Cocoa, and Sugar Exchanges, the New York Cotton Exchange, and the Commodity Exchange, all closed, as we said, at about 1.30. That was about 45 minutes ago because of smoke conditions on the trading floor. Now, we should also tell you briefly, we mentioned the FDR is closed at South Street. The ferry between um, Battery Park and Hoboken, if you're trying to get home to New Jersey or farther point, will run every 20 minutes from this hour on until about 4 o'clock. So within the next hour and a half, it'll run every 20 minutes. And then from 4 to 6 o'clock, at this point, it's scheduled to run every 6 minutes. So we're getting changing now on the Friday evening commute. Uh, let's see, West Street closed from Canal to the Battery Tunnel, and the only power outages that we are confirming right now are inside the World Trade Center facilities. All the other streets in the area around there in the lower Manhattan area reportedly are still getting electricity uh, from Con Ed. Uh, that's about it for this minute, but the information is coming in as we speak, so we'll okay. get right back to you. Carol, if I could, uh, we could recap here, Dana and myself. We had an explosion at about 12.18 this afternoon in World Trade Center building number three. Then there was a report of another explosion perhaps in another building. And the explosion caused tremendous amount of damage on the path.
<coughs> platform beneath the World Trade Center. The ceiling supposedly collapsed and mm -hmm. several people were trapped. We have no word as about the condition or about those trapped people, whether they've gotten them out or whether they're still there or not. In terms of injuries, we have a total of approximately 150. Uh, that's the number given right now, but that changes constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, 25 of them uh, were treated at the scene and five have been hospitalized. And fortunately so far, we have no reports at all of any fatalities. The World Trade Center building number 310 stories. It filled up with smoke almost all the way to the top. We've been talking to people uh, throughout this afternoon who've been trapped on various floors that are doing okay. Uh, they've taken all the precautions they can. Police and fire people are telling the people that are trapped in the World Trade Center not to uh, break any windows because shards of glass could fall down the street and take someone's life or cause some serious injury. And the people who are trapped appear to be in good condition and are calm and panicked. We have reports of people making their way down all 110 floors and doing it well. And we've seen many pictures of people with their faces covered with black soot. Mm. Uh, it is an enormous, um, I wouldn't guess, I guess call it a disaster that's still playing itself out. It really out. still is. It really still is because yeah. some people, including a man named John Caneo, mm -hmm. some people are still on some of these upper floors. He's on the 51st mm -hmm. floor and on the telephone with us. John? Yes, hi. Hi, how are you doing? Okay, this floor is pretty good. There's oxygen and it's breathable. Now, the word I've been told to let you know is that People on freight car number 16 are trapped on the 52nd floor. This is not the passenger elevator. This is the freight elevator. Freight elevator. John, what building are you in? Number one World Trade Center. Number one World Trade. And how many people are with you? Right now, I'd say about 40 to 50. And how's everybody doing? What's the mood? Okay, the mood is congenial. People are sitting around by the windows that are open and they're joking. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, I've got someone who just came down from the 64th floor. Okay. I'll put you on. He's All Richard right. Roberts. Rich, okay. Hi, Rich. Hi. We came down a little while ago. We've been down here, but but uh, some of us have also been out to check the stairwells. There's nobody in the stairwells right now at this level. I'd like to tell you, Rich, that the fire department is telling us, saying that if you're trapped in the buildings and you cannot get through, you can call this number. It's 718. Yeah. 430. Just a second. 718. Yes, yeah, 718. 430. Two six one, right, and they will relay your call. Okay, so okay. that's seven one eight four three zero two six one. Correct. All right. We're missing a number, a digit on that, uh, John. Are, if you yes, could yes, hang we're. hang loose with yeah. us here. Yeah. Well, while while we're waiting that for number. that number, John, uh, when you came down to the floor below, what was the stairwell like? Did you have smoke in that stairwell? Yeah, there's smoke in all the stairwells. How bad was that smoke? Um, you have to keep something over your face so you wouldn't make it far. Okay, what made you get off at that floor? Did you have anybody guiding you? Did you have any warnings as to where to go? We, we just, we, we heard uh, people's voices and the, and the lights had gone out at that point. Uh, I was with a group of people who were trying to help a couple of people in, who were handicapped in wheelchairs. Mm. And we uh, stayed with them, and then we figured out, uh, as the lights went out, that we had to get off on a floor. And this just happened to be the one we got off on. Okay. When you evacuated your floor, how bad was it there? When we evacuated our floor, which was probably about 40 minutes ago, uh, so uh, it was pretty bad on, on the 64th floor. The smoke was very thick. Where was it coming from? Was it coming through the air vents? Was it coming through the coming elevator through the shaft? Was it Coming under the doors through the main corridors. Through the main corridors. You had no doors to close or block that we smoke off. We closed the doors. It didn't do a hell of a lot of good because the smoke just came mm -hmm. in through every seam, nook and cranny it could. Okay, and where you are now is much better. Yeah, because the windows uh, were broken out earlier and there's some fresh air that's coming in. Plus there's some air coming up through a couple of the elevator shafts. Okay. W we, do we have that number now, Jim, the extra we're, number? That we're waiting fixed for it. If you hang on, we'll give you the number to call so we can notify the fire department where you are so sure. they'll send somebody up. Appreciate that. Thank so you, you just John. hang right on there. We'll get that number as quickly as we can. We'll uh, hang here. Nobody's leaving. John. We're going to move over to Lisa Castleman, who is down on the street where many of the people are being treated. Lisa, tell us about that, the emergency setup, the triage setup there. Here we go. Okay. I'm live here now with Officer Don Costley, who was down with a path train area with the uh, ceiling collapse, right? What was that like when you went down there, Officer? Well, we first went down to uh, sub-level uh, B, uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4. On those levels, the, uh, the ceilings were totally collapsed. We tried to get down several halls, but the debris was from the floor, 
all the way up to the ceiling. Uh, we had possibly uh, two or three people trapped in a locker room there, which was unable to, uh, we were unable to gain access to, to get down there. Are they possibly still there? Search. Possibly they could be. We have reports, you have to, you know, go by the reports, go down there. It was too smoky down here at the time, and the fire still had to be extinguished, and they're going to do a secondary search when the fire is uh, put out. I believe it's put out, and they'll be doing it. It's going to be a lot of overhauling, moving all the debris out of the way to get, you know, to do a, a good search. Do you, having been down in that area, what do you think the chances are that they could have survived it? Well, possibly, I, I've been in uh, several building classes where people, I've seen people uh, survive and pancakes collapses where they, uh, there's a void enough for them to uh, survive in. But uh, right here, it looks like, you know, I saw some voids, but it looked, looked pretty bad. It doesn't look good. So when's the next move down there? Well, like I said, when the fire is going to be extinguished. Lisa. Uh, Lisa. Lisa, thank you very much. Lisa. Good luck with that. Lisa. Yes. How many floors collapsed? How many ceilings collapsed? Do you How remember many? what he said? How many floors actually collapsed? How many levels? What would you say? About three or four or five? I, I, there's so many. It was small three to four. We were going down, up and down. We couldn't even tell where we were. Had to be four to five. Yeah, Do you know how many there. people were down there? Do you have any idea how many people were down there at the time? They mentioned two or three earlier, but do you know how many people not were accounted for? Not offhand, no. We, uh, we're talking to workers down there, and apparently most of them did get out. Oh, that's so they're, they're checking now to see if there's anybody else that was left in the building. Still very, uh, a very confusing, difficult situation. Yeah, it's uh, yes. still very confusing down there. A lot of smoke still, the fire. Once that's out and everything settles, we'll be able to get out. The fire is still going? Stand by. I'm sorry, Jim? Is the fire still going? They said a moment ago they yes. think they have it out as of a little while ago, but they haven't been cleared to go back in to go recheck the area. Is, is it unusual for the explosion of one transformer to do so much damage to reinforce a concrete? I'm sorry, Jim. It's a very static. Can okay. you repeat the... Oh. All right. That's that's thank you, Lisa, very much. Thank you. Well, uh, we've been wondering about that all afternoon, uh, how severe the damage was at the PATH train World Trade Center several, station. Uh, levels. Collapse. And uh, as he said, two people are believed trapped. They have not been able to get to these two people. Uh, path service canceled at this point in and out of the World Trade Center station. Um, Frank, did you want to say something? Well, no, except that I think we should again point out for anybody who's tuned in late that the building itself is not in fire. There's no danger right. of that. The fire is confined to the area below the building for the most part. The major problem here is smoke. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, is a major problem because smoke can kill and smoke can also cause all kinds of terrible well, yes, damage. Pictures of survivors. You know, when you talk about fires... All right. Okay. Uh, tell me, Bill. Why, do, as we're doing that, Frank, tell us about the fires. You know, you may have a fire in your apartment, you're worried, concerned how to get out, versus a fire in an office building, the difference. What's the there, number? There's a tremendous difference when you're dealing yeah. with what we see here. People have been working yeah. in an office building. Office buildings okay, are wide you. open. Uh, there's, uh, except for the folks that we have talking to us mm -hmm. on the 51st floor, I believe, they found a small room somehow and got in there in an apartment dwelling. If you're trapped, now we've got that and, number. Do we still fixed. have? Yeah. Okay. That is the number. Uh, do we have those folks on that floor still with us? We hope they're on there. They're on the phone, John Paneo. Can we get to them now? Make sure they can get that number. Or if you're at home and you talk to a loved one on the telephone, give them this number if they are trapped. The reason we're doing this is because the 911 number has been simply flooded. This is the alternate number. Only if you're within the building and if you're trapped, this is the number to call, 718-430-0261. That's 718-430-0261. We'll keep that number up for a while. But as I started to say to you before, the difference between folks who are watching this program right now and this mm -hmm. terrible thing that's happening who live in apartment dwellings right. and those in offices is in an apartment building, you're isolated, you have a small area, you can seal yourself off. You have a metal door, it will protect you. You have windows in most cases that you can open. You are able to defend yourself in an office building you're pretty vulnerable. You're vulnerable because it's a wide open space. You're talking about high ceilings, overhead, smoke can pour in from anywhere. And a very high floor. And yeah, a high possibly. floor, too. And so they're in the importance of being able to get out mm -hmm. and listen to emergency warnings. And unfortunately, we've already heard several instances where people say the first time they ran into help was on the way out of the building when they were getting well, down. We're going back now to Brian Williams. Brian? All right, Jim, I remain uh, here in Lower Manhattan again between World Trade Centers 4 and 5. People keep getting taken out. EMS keeps taking them away. Uh, Danny, I'm going to ask you to turn around and get this uh, group of uh, 
firefighters are coming out of the building now. Uh, you can see the uh, tired faces, flashlights on their helmets still on, having been in the upper floors of the various World Trade Center buildings where the smoke is so thick. Uh, these people are the only people really equipped to be inside. You see on their backs the uh, Scott air packs that are uh, so prevalent in the fire service. That's the only way to do it, and they've been searching floor to floor, of course, especially with all the stairwells. Again, story after story of people coming down, 100 plus floors, uh, finding knots of people were heard at the, we heard at the 60th and 70th floors. There was help for people, a lot of asthma victims, a lot of people with just plain smoke inhalation, a lot of people will have to get checked out anyway, and the soot is just extraordinary, covering all the faces of all the people who have uh, emerged from this. We have some uh, pictures that we uh, shot earlier, uh, along with some interviews with uh, some folks who did make it down safely. It started like a boom, and then the lights went out for a second, and they came back on, and then they just told us to get out, and the smoke started filling up. How many floors did you just come down? 105. What's it like? How long did your trip take? Uh, it took about, what, an hour? An hour, ten, an hour ten, ten minutes. It was moving at first. Uh, stairwell filled up with smoke, no announcements. It flattened out to a hallway on 70 when probably was the scariest. We weren't moving. It was getting smokier. Uh, a lot of carbon in the smoke, and uh, I don't know. It didn't look good. Again, uh, just knots of people, people by the hundreds with nowhere else to go, nothing to do. Some of them do not have their overcoats. They had to get out too quickly uh, of the buildings. Everyone uh, standing around, looking up at the World Trade Center towers. Uh, some of them who were involved in it, others just passers-by. Uh, what they have in common is they keep asking us and everybody else who will listen, what happened? What happened? People have heard rumors of an explosion, transformers. Uh, people are walking around wondering if they can get home by subway. And the continuing stream of uh, ambulances, uh, police and fire vehicles. There's one now coming through lower Manhattan. Uh, we have uh, people uh, pouring out of the entrances, kind of in, uh, in groups of about a dozen. Uh, you can tell what's happening. The groups are making it down from the stairs. Uh, we just saw the chefs, the people who serve the food here at Five World Trade Center, come out. Uh, again, with nothing to protect them from the elements. This uh, very cold blowing snow. Dan, over here, uh, we can see live uh, EMS is uh, helping a woman now. She's surrounded by camera crews helping her out. Uh, what was obviously a, a bad, bad situation, uh, we can presume, in one of the World Trade Center towers. Her footing is not at all steady. But you see this sort of thing all over this area in lower Manhattan. Uh, a woman with a, uh, a white uh, blouse and a, a blue skirt. Uh, and they're just loading them in ambulances and taking them, uh, we assume, to Beekman downtown, to uh, Bellevue in this area. Whatever hospitals have uh, emergency rooms that can take the patient load. Brian? Uh, yeah. Maybe you can keep your uh, eyes open for the possibility of seeing some New Jersey firefighters. Because New Jersey firemen, firefighters are on the scene now. Uh, New Jersey fire. Yeah, for the first time since 1965, we're told. Yeah, that, that's uh, referred to, I believe, as kind of a general alarm. Uh, uh, when they go past two, three, four, five alarms, you get whatever you can. Uh, and speaking of firefighter yes. reinforcement, uh, they even have police academy students down here, uh, the cadets from the NYPD. Uh, such is the need for emergency personnel, all right. as to all the rest of us. You can't say this enough. Obviously, there's no regular traffic down here. Yeah. Stay away. There's nothing visible when you look at the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. Stay yeah. of the number, right? Yeah. Brian, thank you. A correction on that number if you are trapped, if you can get the word to someone who is in one of the World Trade Center buildings. The correct number if you're trapped, 718-403-0261. That is the correct number. We apologize for any yeah. inconvenience there. The correct number, 718 403-0261. John Eckstein, how about you calling that number? How are you doing? John? Um, the thing that we need the most is mm -hmm. a little bit of encouragement and mm -hmm. someone saying, well, they've reached such and such a floor. The smoke does not seem to be getting worse. Um, there was a slight movement to break a few windows, which we curtailed. But the thing that we need the most is someone is a little information, which would give us a chance to... Well, um, we have a number for you to call, John. All right, I've got it. You got it? 718-403-0261. Right, call it, and you'll get some reassurance. Okay, I want to hang on this one, because once I hang this phone up, it, I will no longer be able to make outgoing phone calls. John, okay. what floor are you on again? Refresh our this memory. This is the 95th floor. 95. Of 
two World Trade Center. Maybe we'll call for you. We'll keep get the line open. Yeah, now, uh, here's my number, 390-8888. Uh, uh -huh. Okay. Okay. But once I hang this up, there's no more electricity. Yeah. And Don't hang up. I won't. Don't hang up. Okay. And, and, John, how many people are with you? Oh, 75. 75. Now, you can keep this line open, but you can call into your office space on 390 8888, correct? Yes, it's my okay. fax phone. Okay. okay. Okay, John, we will do that. We'll do that for you. Take good care, all right? Yeah, well, okay. we, haven't, we haven't broken into the sake locker yet, but... Uh, <laughs> Everything's and, John, as far as encouraging words, we're here for you, okay? Good. We just, I, okay. I just want to be able to tell the people something. All right, John, uh, has, anybody, what... has anybody approached you from the security in the building, or uh, anyone else come to you? It, uh, it is possible, but doubtful. Uh, Captain Curry in the Bronx, if you're watching this coverage right now, I know you were before, we're talking to John uh, Eckstein, he's up in the 90-some floors, and he Two likes it. Uh, Two World Trade Center. Two World Trade Center, yeah. And he would like some reassurance of Captain Curry, if you're hearing this, if you call him at 390-8888, he would like to talk somewhere. They need some calm reassurance right now. They have about 75 people up there. They're doing okay, but they're getting a little nervous, understandably. Now, some people have walked down. It's taken them more than an hour to go. More than 100 floors. Uh, Brian, Lisa have seen mm. some of these people as they've come down, stood on their yeah. face, inhaled some of that smoke. Let's go into the Channel 2 newsroom. Carol Martin has the latest for us. On All right, Dana, on. I am not sure if you've already reported this, but we are getting word now that there are two confirmed dead in this tragedy. We do not have identities or anything like that. Uh, that will be relayed as soon as we uh, uh, get that information. But we have two dead now at uh, any of the hospitals that are, of course, taking in the injured. We will give you more on that as it becomes available. The hospitals, of course, have been Beekman uh, downtown, also uh, St. Vincent's and Beth Israel Medical Center, which are receiving most of the injured, those, of course, closest to the World Trade Center area. Also, you know, to put a little of this into perspective, you've got two of the tallest buildings in the world right here in, in our town, uh, second only to the Sears Trade Center, which is the tallest building in the world, and then you have the World Trade Towers. And so over 100,000 people every day going to work in these buildings, and then all of the adjacent buildings taking several hundred thousand more. We also don't know yet what will become of those who, of course, would go through the path station to make their way home to New Jersey, to Staten Island, to all the other areas that it links. And you're talking several thousands more who will be impacted by that, and it's already starting to happen. Once again, let me bring you up to date on some of the closings that will impact on your travel around the area. The FDR Drive southbound is closed now. The Manhattan-bound Brooklyn Battery Tunnel closed. Of course, all path service out until further notice. We're trying to find out about alternate service as we speak. West Street closed from Canal Street down to the Battery Tunnel. Uh, the Manhattan-bound Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, I mentioned that. The Gowanus Expressway leading into the Prospect is closed to anyone except emergency vehicles. The ferry between Battery Park and Hobart Broken, set to run every 20 minutes until about 4 o'clock, it's 2.30 right now, and from 4 to 6, six it's expected to run every 6 minutes. Now, as you know, the fires, we have not gotten confirmation that the fires have been put down, but uh, we were told there were two, possibly three fires, three separate fires burning, and so the fire department's working on that, as you said, um, assisted by some New Jersey details. All of the commodity markets were closed at 1.30 this afternoon because of the uh, fire and smoke conditions. That would be the New York Mercantile Exchange, the Coffee, Cocoa, and Sugar Exchanges, the New York Cotton Exchange, and the Commodity Exchange, all closed at 1.30 this afternoon. And as we mentioned also, so we may be the only station on the air, at least of the three major stations on the air at this hour, because most have their transmitting stations in the World Trade Center towers, which of course have been disrupted. Ours is in the Empire State Building, so we're trying to stay with you to bring you everything we know for this time. Traffic, of course, diverted away also from the Holland Tunnel, we're told, in order to leave the area open for emergency service vehicles. And of course, that's going to move it around to either the, um, the Lincoln Tunnel or any of the other um, over and under passing to the other parts of the uh, area. Let's see what else we can tell you. Can we give you those numbers once again in case you are inside the building? Uh, Jim, were you going to say? Yes, you were talking about emergency vehicles. Uh, one, one of our technicians just arrived, Andy Cato, mm -hmm. and he said he was in the area and he said that people are not pulling over, they're not making room for EMS vehicles trying to get through, mm -hmm. that they're just insisting on keeping their right of way and not pulling over and blocking the roads. Oh. 
unthinkable. Which is unthinkable. Right. Which is unthinkable. You know, yes. I have to share an experience. I was coming from a story this morning down the West Side Highway, and I didn't know this had happened, and it was about, at that point, uh, just after noon, and it happened at 12, 18. Right. And the same thing was happening, Jim. I saw all these emergency service vehicles trying to get down the highway, and people were just sort of sluggishly not paying attention, I guess, not knowing, needless to say, what was going well, on. Well, they don't have to know what's going on. When they hear a siren, they're supposed to get out right of the way. Yes, exactly. Thank, thank you, Carol. We'll get back to you in a few minutes. Now let's go to Channel 2's Mary Murphy. She's at Beekman Downtown Hospital. Again, we have learned that there are two confirmed deaths. Oh, uh, Carol? Mary, it's Sana. All right, you see the ambulance coming into Beekman Downtown Hospital right now. I'd say it's probably about the 50th I've seen in the last mm. two hours. And the people just keep coming from the World Trade Center. Mm. Ambulances from all over the city have been diverted to the hospital from St. Vincent's, regular EMS ambulances. They just keep bringing the employees and the workers who were stranded there. I'm right now with Vito DeLeo. He was down in the sub-basement oh, level when this happened. Vito, what do you remember happening? Uh, about quarter after 12, big flash from the parking lot. Just destroyed our lot, uh, just destroyed our shop, I'm sorry. Uh, the furniture was up in the air, the concrete walls are down. It's just a terrible down there. How many people were down there? Uh, I guess in our shop there's about 30 people, but all three shops, this is a sub-basement where all the, all the maintenance people are, maybe 75, 100 people, I, I would imagine. And you were all on lunch break? We were all on lunch break at that time, yes, so a lot of people are down there. Now, I understand you've been trying to check the workers as they come in. How many of the workers have you accounted for? Uh, we accounted for everybody but two people. Now, we don't know if they've been transported to other hospitals at this time. This is what I'm trying to account for. Now, we heard before that it may have been a car that exploded. Is that what it seemed like to you? Uh, we don't know. We can't, you know, say yes, no, but it was a big explosion, and it came from the parking lot area. Now, if it was or were not, I don't know. Another report I hear that it could be an electrical transformer. So. It may have been an electrical transfer. You see more people over there. They may be employees that worked on other floors. And that, I want to ask you, Vito, you have blood on you. Uh, how serious were your injuries? Uh, I have a punctured eardrum at this time. I'm sorry. A, a punctured eardrum. Mm -hmm. And my lips, my legs are sore. But there's other people in there worse shape than me. You told me that you saw people buried under concrete. That's correct. What was the scene like down there? Uh, we, had a, we were crawling out of the shop from furniture being turned over, concrete. Like I say, walls came down, and it was you just had to crawl and hope we get to a staircase at that time. How it is now, my boss and everyone else are taking people out of our shop. And they have the police over there, obviously. We understand now there are 91 people here at Beekman Downtown Hospital, including, we're told, one man who fell five stories from some floor in the World Trade Center. We heard he may be a firefighter, but we have not had that confirmed. Now, you saw people from all the different departments and units in the World Trade Center, mechanics, carpenters, people also from the trains, people on the higher floors. Was there confusion there, panic? Uh, I mean, what I could tell you is that there was a lot of panic. There is no electric, so all the lights are out in the World Trade Center. Uh, we do have men stationed throughout the building that communicate by radio trying to hold the place orderly. Mm -hmm. There is evacuations going on in an orderly manner from what I hear. So things are going smoothly there, but we're more concerned about the injured people. And we know that they have stretchers just lined up here outside the emergency room. About a third of the hospital staff of 800 is just working directly on this case. The other doctors Mary, obviously with the other patients. Yes, Mary, Jim. Mary, what about the people who were on the path railroad platform when the ceilings came down does he know anything about that do you know anything about the people trapped by the path platform uh my boss are down there from what i understand everyone has been evacuated down there and they are in the b6 level at this time this building goes six levels down mm -hmm. and right now they are searching that level to see if there are people down there at that time i don't know what the damage is down there but they are searching for people down there to see if they can find anyone. Now, had, had That's not, all I know. But Jim, yes, you can keep asking me some questions. Okay. It's had a little it, difficult at times, but bear with you. Had it not been for the lunch hour, they would have all been trapped inside where they were working, correct? What Jim is saying is that if it had not been for the lunch hour, you might all have been trapped inside where you were working. Uh, that could be true and not true because we had dispersed around the building. You know, other yeah. places in the building didn't get touched at all. Mm -hmm. where, where we were was heavily damaged. So it could have saved other people if it didn't happen about quarter up to 12. 
You know, some people stay in for lunch. A lot of people stay in for lunch. All the shops have to stay in for lunch. We are on call 24 hours, you know, so we come down for lunch in case there is an emergency. We have our lunch in the shop. Mary? And that's why everyone is confined to the B2 level at that time. There may have been up to 150 people just having lunch there. That, well, within the shops, on the B2 level itself, about 100, 150 people, that's correct. I know that one of the paramedics we met here about 12.33 told me that the first victim that he brought in may have been blown out of the parking lot by the force of the explosion, and he seemed to think it may have been a car explosion. But then another woman we spoke to, a chef on the 31st floor, said she heard an explosion in that area, so we don't know if there were multiple explosions. We're relying on you back there for mm -hmm. some of the information since we're so consumed by what's happening here at the hospital. It is still coming out, uh, the information, Mary. One thing we can tell you, the Port Authority has said mm -hmm. that all of the fires are out at this time after going for, uh, gosh, several hours here since this began at 1218, but the fires are out. People, though, are still trapped on some floors. Do uh, you have any, any more information about the man that fell five floors? No, we've been relying on regular updates from the woman okay. in charge of press relations at the hospital, and she has not been out here in about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. She did say she thought it was a firefighter. She was not absolutely sure. I know that one of the fire officers' union representatives was talking to Brian Williams right. before, and he might have some information on that. Hospital calling all their people, all their off-duty people? Yeah, there are people in. just rushing here from all corners, and as I mentioned, uh, at least a third of this hospital staff is just working on yes. this disaster and mm -hmm. there are 800 people at least on the staff they figure do some division if I can remember about 250 or 300 staff just working on this. Mary when you were talking to this is Frank Field Mary when you were talking to the gentleman he said that all of his men were downstairs with him in a normal course of events if a fire breaks out of this nature what would his men be doing would they be part of the rescue operation? Um, Frank Fields had a question for you, Vito. He was wondering what would happen if a fire breaks out. Anyway, would you be part of the rescue operation? Uh, we do. There are people that are, do, are, we are involved in the rescue. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate we were on a B2 level mm -hmm. at the time, so. Why was that unfortunate? Well, you know, being that we do have two-way communications, and if we were dispatched around the building, you know, we could keep people or tenants or whatever in contact with what's going on, you know, and right now, like I said, I don't know if they have phone service or whatever, so a lot of the tenants would be in the block, you know, well, so I don't know what's going on in the building right now, I can't say. You but say you were too far down to really be of any assistance. Right, we were in the basement two level, and we were worried at that time because our, sh our shop was in such a sh shramble, to get our men out of at the time, you know. Uh, we don't know what was going on upstairs or what damage or anything, you know. Now, how were you able to get out so quickly or fairly quickly? Well, I was kind of lucky because when the explosion occurred, I was at a desk and I seen the flash coming towards me and I bent down and the desk somehow landed on top of me. So when the walls and stuff came down, came on the desk and I just crawled for the exits, you know. How close were you to an exit? Uh... I don't know, maybe 75 feet, you know. Do you feel that you have enough exits down there in that level? Uh, yes, there is multiple ways of getting out, you know. There are one, two, I don't know, three exits plus the parking lot, but at the time was the problem there. But yes, there is, uh, you know, there is plenty of ways of getting out there. We also, as I mentioned, interviewed a couple of people when we first got to the hospital, and I believe that we do have some tape of one person that I did talk to about an hour and a half ago when she first arrived. I heard the explosion. How loud was it? It was like a a, a, a bomb, yeah. and that's all I heard. And everybody started running, and everything was like smoke coming. We had to walk down all those stairs. Did you see a fire? No, I didn't see no fire. How heavy an explosion was it? It was big. It was big because it was a lot of smoke. Did you see a lot of people trapped or anything like that? A lot of people trapped. Some people probably still trapped inside. Now, that woman was a chef. I talked about her before. She was on the 31st floor of Tower A at the World Trade Center. And our guest here, Vito DeLeo, he was underneath the center in mm -hmm. sub-level two. So you can see people just trapped all over the building, uh, or the tower. I would imagine so. From what I understand, a lot of the, I guess, whatever happens when there's an explosion may have traveled. There was a lot of elevator shafts mm -hmm. and may have traveled up the shafts or whatever. And that's how the... Uh, from what I understand, the floors have shake, you know, the trade center that shake after the explosion. Mary? Yes, Dana. I'll try my best to hear you. Okay, well, Frank and I were just talking about this. Some of the people who are on the higher floors complaining that they weren't given information, 
if we're, if we're yeah, not... Yeah, the, the idea here... Well, Vito's Vito. one of those people who's yeah. trapped. If Vito and his men, who normally would have communication with all the floors, Mary, was available, he would be talking to those folks that we're talking to, trying to get them to understand that there is help on the way. Yeah. But he and his men have apparently been knocked out of the situation and they can't help. Yes. So this kind of answers that. Uh, uh, and unfortunately, those circumstances do occur. Mary, thank you. We'll get back to you in a little bit. With us now on the telephone is Isaiah Rivera, who we've talked to several times during the afternoon. Isaiah, what are you seeing going on up there? Okay, we have access to the roof right now. We have a helicopter that landed at Brussels Air Supply and some officers, and they're getting preparing to take us out uh, in the helicopter. Right now, I have the police uh, officer, uh, Sagi. He might have some words. Okay. Uh, he might uh, talk to you right now. Okay. Oh, that's great. Can I ask you? Hello. Hello, officer. Yeah, this is police officer Zagby, my service unit. How are you? Frank Field here and Dana. How are you? Uh, could I ask you, the normal events, you don't land helicopters on rooftops in New York City to save people. Uh, not at all. It's part of a high-rise rescue system that we have. And what we did is we repelled out of the helicopter onto the rooftop. You didn't land a helicopter. No. We, we repelled four officers, three officers and a sergeant onto the rooftop. Well, t explain to the uh, public, repelling means what? You came down on we, we came down on a rope, right? We're all trained in rope rescue. And what are your officers doing? Right now we're trying to keep the people uh, calm. We have uh, five minor injuries up here on a rooftop. And uh, we're clearing an area for uh, a landing zone for the helicopter to bring in some elevator mechanics to fix the elevators to bring everybody down to ground level. Oh, okay. Did some people actually go to the roof for refuge? Is that what you're finding there, or are you heading down? Uh, well, actually, we're at the uh, at the transmitter station now. We're, okay. we're, we're cleared down to floor 107. Okay. And what we're going to do is when uh, we get the elevators fixed, that's what I've been told from mm -hmm. my supervisors, that when we get the elevators fixed, we're going to uh, bring people down to ground level. Any idea how long that's going to be? Uh, you'll guess this is a good yeah. point. I just got you. It could be hours. Well, also, w in landing a helicopter, you know, w we should really explain, uh, landing a helicopter on a rooftop building in, in, in mm. Manhattan mm -hmm. is quite an accomplishment. You did not land. I want to emphasize that. No, we didn't land, but we're clearing the landing zone now. We're clearing, we're clearing the antennas off the roof as much as we can oh, so we can... Hold it. Wait. You're clearing, wow. you're going to knock down all the antennas? No, we're not going to knock them all down. We're trying to clear a landing zone. The pilot on the helicopter will make his determination when he's coming in if he can land the ship enough. If he cannot land the ship, what we'll do is we'll use a hoist on the outside of the helicopter and lower the mechanics to the rooftop. We have four emergency service officers out there now, and there'll be two more on the helicopter with them, as, long, as well as the flight crew from the helicopter. And you're going to dismantle the antennas? Uh, we're not, we're, we're, that's one of the options that we have. If, we can't, if the pilots feel that they can't land the ship, then they won't, and we'll use, um, we'll use the uh, repelling gear or the hoist on the outside of the ship to lower the, uh, gonna... the elevator mechanics. Evacuate people with the helicopter? Uh, we're, we're seeing if we can evacuate the uh, one pregnant female with the helicopter right now. You, 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 she's gone already? Hold on. She's gone? Oh, she's been evacuated already. Okay, that's good. The helicopter okay. took her out already. Now, this is some touch and go work for you all, is it not? I'm sorry? Touch and go work. Difficult maneuvering amongst all that stuff up there. It, uh, yeah, I guess so, yes. Yeah, but we have a job to do, and that's what our focus is at this point. What about the wind? <laughs> well, I <laughs> Well, uh, what is the, you were rappel down onto the roof. Yes, were you able did. to bring any first aid supplies? Yes, we brought Scott packs and first aid equipment with us. For people who might have been uh, in problems? Right. Okay, have you found people up at that level who have difficulties that you're helping right now? Right now, my supervisor is uh, coordinating all the efforts here. I'm, uh, there's, there is people up here who are, um, who, like I said, there's five people who have uh, minor, minor injuries. There's a, there's a snow condition up in the uh, upper floors here. But it's not where you can't breathe. Mm -hmm. Okay, how, so, many, how many folks, did, how many of your people came down on those ropes? So far, um, let me see, what, four of us came down so far, probably. I just heard the helicopter overhead. There's probably two more of us on, on the way down what right are now. You, what are you doing with the equipment on the roof? Well, it's, we're, we're using, uh, we're brought sky packs with us, mm -hmm. so we can do uh, a preliminary search and keep everybody calm. That's mm -hmm. the main thing. Everybody can breathe right now, and there's no major, major... Uh, injury cases, so what we're trying to do is keep everybody calm until we can but get the elevators working and get everybody down off the uh, the roof of this building. But you're not okay. cutting down antennas, right? <laughs> we're not going to cut you off the air, okay, I'm just wondering. <laughs> well, <laughs> right now we have somebody on the phone, Gus Denise from the Port Authority. Hi, what can you tell us about the, the fires are out, we understand. Hi, right now uh, we're trying to uh, disseminate the uh, rumors from the uh, from the facts. Um, 
The biggest thing uh, the uh, Port Authority police officers are trying to do is to uh, prevent panic. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, that's the one thing that they don't want right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, to uh, treat the, uh, the injured and uh, try to get them uh, medical attention uh, as soon as possible. The reports that I'm getting is that uh, it's, uh, it's like a, a total madhouse mm -hmm. and they're trying to get some sort of uh, order into the place. And uh, uh, I'm being updated like every 15 minutes. I have my vice president, uh, Tom Moore, down at the uh, PAD precinct and uh, he uh, calls in and uh, he, upsta he updates me with the uh, information. Now you spoke, and, you spoke yeah. of order. Certainly the rush hour is going to be chaotic. Will you provide buses? For the path train commuters, who of course won't be able to use those trains this evening. I don't know. That's uh, that's up to the port authority. I don't know what their mm -hmm. plans are. Uh, like uh, like I said right now, uh, I represent the police officers, and yes, uh, right. I have uh, uh, the three police officers that I know of who were injured and uh, who are being uh, transported to uh, St. Vincent's Hospital. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and as I said, Jim, as I get the, uh, yes. the reports in, you know, I'll be right. more than happy to update you. Okay. Okay. Gus, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Now we'll go to Brian Williams outside the World Trade Center. Brian? Jim, Dana, hello. Uh, this has really become uh, uh, Ambulance Row here along. We're at Church in Fulton near uh, World Trade Centers uh, 4 and 5. I'll tell you what, uh, we just went up to the fourth floor of the Hotel Millennium, and uh, it's almost uh, like any port in a storm. EMS has uh, all but deputized some of the hotel employees, Hotel Millennium being across the street from World Trade Center 5, and people are being treated there. Uh, it's a warm place. They're being given water. They're being uh, wiped down. Uh, we saw more than one person come in from their offices and see themselves in the mirror for the first time. They were absolutely in shock at the amount of soot they carried out of the building with them. Again, uh, this seems to be kind of an ambulance staging area where a lot of those uh, badly injured are being put in ambulances and taken away. They keep arriving and departing every few seconds. Police are right now backing in a, a truckload of uh, sawhorses. As you look at the, uh, the bowels of the various buildings in this area and exactly uh, how thick the smoke was, keep in mind as you see this, these pictures, uh, this was not the height uh, of the explosion. This was I'm several fine. minutes later, and it had been uh, all but ventilated at this point, as dingy and grimy uh, as it looks. Um, but again, uh, this is uh, far from over as they continue to move enough folks in to take enough folks out who really need the treatment. Back to you. Okay, Brian, some of those people you spoke with earlier took them more than an hour to get down the World Trade Center steps, especially if they were up on one of the higher floors, well, more than 100 people floors. people with, with asthma and people with heart problems. And then put shock and Navigating all that. that space and then trying to breathe that smoke-filled air. It is terror in the tower. In mm -hmm. fact, it really is terror in the tower. Uh, you're watching uh, Channel 2 News' live coverage mm -hmm. of uh, the explosion and fires at the World Trade Center. So far, we have learned that two people have died, two unaccounted for, more than 150 injuries. Uh, people taken to Beekman Downtown mm -hmm. Hospital, St. Vincent Hospital, and Beth Israel Hospital. And we should say that we have, according to a man who was working down below in, in, in the World Trade Center, that there are several people that he thinks that are still Please. trapped in the rubble down below. On the phone with us is Chuck DiGatano with EMS. It's been a couple of hours since we talked to you last, Chuck. Can you give us an update from your end? Sure. Uh, what we're looking at right now is uh, we have uh, been treating and transporting approximately over 100 patients, the majority of which uh, have sustained smoke inhalation from the uh, diffuse smoke condition throughout all of the towers of the World Trade Center, as well as uh, people that have sustained cuts, bruises, some fractured limbs, and uh, some internal injuries that we saw earlier as a result of the debris raining down upon them when the uh, structure collapsed. We have uh, a full complement of uh, EMS ambulances staffed by our paramedics, emergency medical technicians, uh, as well as four of our major emergency response vehicles, which are essentially emergency rooms on wheels that enable us to treat uh, multiple patients in a controlled environment. In addition, due to the extensive smoke, uh, we have a unit down there that's capable of uh, delivering oxygen to uh, multiple patients at one time. Uh, one of the uh, earliest treatments in smoke inhalation is the administration of humidified oxygen. And this we can uh, do right at the scene to stabilize them prior to treatment. 
Uh, what about the people trapped down below in the rubble? Can you tell us something about them? As far as we know right now, Jim, the majority of the people that were trapped had been removed uh, by the police and fire departments. Uh, however, as this incident unfolds, uh, they make uh, secondary uh, searches to ensure that uh, nobody has been missed, as well as trying to account for everybody that uh, is in the building. Is the entire EMS service now employed in this effort? Well, uh, we, we do have uh, a large number of uh, both units and personnel dedicated to this event. However, we are maintaining uh, adequate coverage throughout the five boroughs to handle the routine 911 calls that are, mm -hmm. that are coming in. One thing that we do ask mm -hmm. the public, of course, uh, is to uh, refrain from calling the emergency medical service right. unless they have a bona fide life-threatening emergency mm -hmm. uh, so that we can uh, appropriately uh, handle both this uh, situation and any other emergencies that might arise uh, among the city. Chuck, you talked about going back to check if any people were trapped, specifically at this path station. We had heard at one point possibly two people trapped. Do you know specifically about that area? Uh, no, we do not. Uh, I don't have any information mm -hmm. that uh, focuses on that particular area right at this time. Is this the worst kind of a disaster you've ever worked on? Uh, well, in, 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 in an arena such as New York City, we've had quite a few uh, disasters, uh, yes. maybe not of this, this scope of magnitude. Yes. I mean, uh -huh. this uh, brings to mind, of course, Union Square and uh, the uh, crashes at the LaGuardia Airport. However, uh, as far as patient count is concerned, uh, this is one of uh, uh, the, uh, the largest of this incident that I've been involved with personally, yes. Frank Field would like to ask a question. Yeah, sure. Yes, Frank. In these situations, your EMS people are quite heroic. You go right down into the into the pit where it's happening. Have any of your people been affected, injured, or any respiratory problems, breathing the smoke? Um, I, I don't have any definitive word on that uh, right now. I, I do know our, our folks, uh, the, the effort that uh, they have uh, demonstrated is just tremendous, as well as the police department and fire department. Um, and uh, as is the nature of this beast, injuries are uh, quite common among the rescue workers, and uh, that's an additional burden that we're confronted with uh, to treating the civilians, but our own folks and our fellow rescue workers as well. We're seeing quite a few people right now that appear to have burns. Uh, yes, I, I do have uh, that on my monitor as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, there have been uh, people that have sustained some minor first-degree burns uh, from the fire, but uh, the majority of the victims uh, were of a smoke inhalation type of injury as mm -hmm. opposed to uh, soft tissue trauma. Mm -hmm. Well, Chuck, thank you very, very much. We'll stay with you a little bit later on. Maybe we should check with John Exley and see if he was able to get through. Oh, we don't have John. Is the line closed? Sean Caneo. John, how are you doing on the 51st floor? John? We don't have that, but we do have the, looks like, uh, is this home video? What is this? Aerial shots from up high? Yeah. I'd like to see where those helicopters are, where that helicopter is. Well, if you look is. at the rooftops, Jim, how are you going to land a helicopter? I have no idea. No I way have no way of landing. amazing. The, the, the people they brought down, you can't land on that kind of a building. And what they did was, as, uh, as the patrolman before mentioned, well, you've seen the top of they the building, rappelled yeah. down on ropes, yes. the way you see these uh, movie The top pictures. of the building is crisscrossed with water. That's right. That. It would be very difficult for a helicopter. To, uh, that's why one of the big errors made, very often people rush to rooftops thinking helicopters will take them off. Well, in this case, they were able to get people onto the roof because they lowered them by rope, right. and the chances of getting a helicopter to land on that roof you see there, nil. There's just no way. And plus the wind, as you mentioned earlier. Terrible you, wind. Actually. You get crosswinds. You get all this kind of, uh, and this kind of weather. I mean, that would be an enormous accomplishment. And in that movie, The, the Towering Inferno, again, referring to that, uh, they tried landing a helicopter on the building, and the helicopter goes Well, uh, we, we, we don't want to mention The Towering no, no, Inferno, because no, there's no, no fire here. There's no fire, but I mean, you have the rescue effort, you have the tall, yeah. tall building, and those... Never happens. Fact, it's it's, it's one right. of those things. You, 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 uh, in this case, uh, it's, it's brilliant, I think, to mm -hmm. bring the guys in Absolutely. to fix the elevators by landing them on rope lines down to right. the top of the roof, bring down oxygen tanks, got tanks take for anybody people. if they need it. And if there's an emergency, maybe get a basket down mm -hmm. for that pregnant woman who was brought out. I don't know how she got down a hundred and oh, two stories. Those guys have so much nerve oh. down those rope ladders. And it's Incredible. a good thing they do. 
Channel 2's Mary Murphy is live at Beekman Downtown Hospital where many of the injured have been taken. Looks like she's with one of the emergency employees. Mary? Yes, Dane, I'm with Rafael Hernandez. He's a nursing assistant in the emergency room and he does confirm for me that it was a firefighter who fell to yes, five Dane. floors. Do you know right. anything about his condition right now? No, no, right now I don't know about his condition, but he's doing very well because they think they, they, they care him very well inside. Now, you've been wheeling patients in and out for the last two yes. and a half hours. Yes, sadly. Can you tell me what the scene is like in the emergency room? It's very cloudy. It's too much. You know, we're trying to do the best we can to every all the patients. Mm -hmm. So we try to help everybody as much as we can, and we everybody's working. Housekeeping department, the people that work on the floor, medical record, everybody's helping. Mm -hmm. Try to cooperate with the, everybody. Rafael actually does not treat the patients. He is a nursing assistant, so mm -hmm. he helps get them in to mobilize some of the other workers yeah. to get things organized. I know there must be a triage system going on yeah, as well. Very, very, very lots of system we have it. It's everybody, the whole hospital is cooperating in, every, in the what's, emergency. What's happening to uh, other patients in the hospital and their care? Jim so. wants to know what's happening to the other patients in the hospital. Is their care <laughs> suffering they, at all? They, we have some other uh, nurses on the floor. They take care of the other people on the floor. Mary, are, people, know, are people still coming in at this point? Yes, they are bringing people in every few minutes. Uh, also, if we pan over here to the left, you'll see there's a police van from the mm -hmm. 13th Precinct. It just arrived with about two dozen oxygen tanks. Apparently, there is not enough oxygen here at Beekman Hospital to use for the people who need it. A lot of people suffered smoke inhalation. They came in with the oxygen mask on. We have to put the oxygen on the, on the face because they're smoking, they, they, they're in pain. Uh, Mary? Yes, Jim. Uh, with so many people coming in, coming in, coming in, and not many going out, where are they putting the people in the hospital? In the corridors? They haven't really moved people out of the corridors, as far as I know. What were you going to say? I have another gentleman no. here working with the hospital. No, no, they said there was, a, there was 106 people so far arrived. Now 106 people, the number it's up to. And where are they? Oh, it's slowing down. It's slowing down a little bit now? Okay. Well, now you hear mm -hmm. over 100 patients at the hospital mm -hmm. from the World Trade Center. I'd say probably most of the people came here because mm -hmm. it's the closest hospital. I know others are going to Bellevue, apparently St. Vincent. Mm -hmm. It's really just a maddening scene here because, you know, they were just bombarded initially. At one point in this driveway, I'd say there are about 10 ambulances packed up. And then, as I mentioned before, as soon as they unloaded the patients, they went right back out again to bring more in. Mm -hmm. Some people were mobile with their face just covered with soot. Others were on stretchers with oxygen masks, blood on their legs, their heads, their arms. Mary, do you see any people being discharged from the hospital and being sent home? Actually, I think I saw one woman before. She seemed to be in shock. She didn't even have her stockings on. She was dressed in business attire and hospital-issued slippers, no mm -hmm. stockings, and I think her boyfriend was leading her away. She just mm -hmm. seemed stunned by the whole thing. I well imagined, well, well imagined. imagined. Thanks, Mary, reporting from Beekman Downtown Hospital. Let's go to our newsroom now. Michelle Marsh has some more updates for us. Michelle? Hi, Danny. Here's the very latest information we have for you right now from the Channel 2 newsroom. According to fire officials, the fire has still not yet been declared out or under control. That's the latest information we have now from the newsroom. Fire officials confirm two people have died in this tragedy. An unknown number of people are, of course, still trapped in the buildings. Fire officials are still officially saying 150 people have been injured from this, but we suspect that number will rise. But right now, the official number is 150. Beekman Hospital now reports more than 50 injuries, mostly smoke inhalation. St. Vincent's Hospital and Beth Israel are also receiving the injured. Uh, traffic now, let me give you the latest information we have on that. Traffic is being diverted away from the Holland Tunnel to leave the area open, of course, for emergency service workers to get in and out. Brooklyn Battery Tunnel remains closed. Unlikely it will reopen in time for rush hour. It's being used for emergency vehicles. And the Gowanus Expressway leading into the Prospect Expressway is closed to everyone but emergency vehicles. Traffic is also being diverted away from the Holland Tunnel to leave the area again open for emergency service workers. The FDR Drive southbound is closed south of Canal. The West Side Highway is closed in both directions south of Canal. No path service between World Trade, the World Trade Center and New Jersey. All other path trains are reportedly running with major delays. Now, the subway. 
the numbers one and nine trains are bypassing Cortland Street Station. All other service is reportedly close to normal at this time. As for surface traffic, West Street uh, is closed from Canal Street to the Battery Tunnel. Uh, the ferry between Battery Park and Hoboken will run every 20 minutes until 4 o'clock. Then from 4 to 6 p.m., it will run every 6 minutes. All right, here's the latest information we have on what to do if you are trapped. If you're trapped in one of these towers, fire department says you can call these numbers to tell rescuers where you are. Numbers 212-999-2222 or 999-3333. Now, if you can't get through on either of those numbers, the Bronx dispatcher says you can call 718-403-0261 and your message will be relayed to rescuers at the scene. Please do not call 911. That line has been flooded as you've been hearing all afternoon. And if you are listening to us in the towers, uh, the, the fire department is urging you to stay put. They will reach you. That's the latest we have right now from the newsroom. Back to Dana okay. and Jim. Michelle, thank you very much. We'll be back with you in a short time, I'm sure. Now for further information directly from the scene to Lisa Castleman. Lisa. Hi, Jim. Well, there was quite a flow of people coming out of the building as of 10 or 15 minutes ago that appears to have slowed down dramatically. I asked uh, one crew he, member of a crew here whether they felt they got everybody out. He said it looks like it, but they're really not sure. They're, total, they're completely unsure. As we mentioned a little while ago, there appeared to have been people trapped in the area where the fire was, near the path train where the roof collapsed. They were hoping to go back down there and see if they were able to actually get those people out as of about half an hour ago, 40 minutes, they wouldn't even be alive. Um, of course, we've heard the report that two people have been uh, reported dead, but uh, many people here are speculating as to whether that really is the total. Now, behind me here, you can see the ambulances are still here. They're available for providing oxygen for people who need them. A little while ago, all those chairs there were full. Seems to have slowed down quite a bit here. Uh, I wouldn't call this calm, but it seems to be a little bit more of a controlled situation here on the ground outside the World Trade Center. Thanks, Lisa. It's Lisa. almost uh, been three hours now. It's good to see that things are calming down. You spoke of the ground. We yeah. just received word that a, a police helicopter uh, plucked a pregnant woman off the top of building two World Trade Number and brought two. her down to safety. This is uh, just... That's unbelievable. Every way they are rescuing you know, people. Uh, they, they're trained for that, but still, when they do it, it's uh, it still seems beyond uh, you know well, the line of duty. The officer said that that they would stay, they would not try to get anybody off unless it was a real emergency, yeah, and then they would lower a basket. Now we don't want people to think they landed that no, no. helicopter. No, they lowered, they lowered they, the they, basket, picked the woman up, and brought her up into right. the chopper and took her down. Now with the winds up there and the uh, poor visibility, it made it above right. and beyond. It really Absolutely. Is. Frank, so many of these people suffered smoke inhalation. How long do you feel that? How long does that last? Yes. Depending on how much of that smoke you, you take in, mm -hmm. it could last for uh, quite a while. Uh, the, at least, you know, in a, in a major fire where there's heat, Plus smoke, it's even more devastating it because right. it scorches your lungs mm -hmm. and your throat. This is a case where, obviously, we heard uh, the AMS say that most of the people they had came in with lung problems, respiratory insult. Going down through the stairwell, we heard so many reports that it was so black and they were trying to breathe that horrible smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, irritating is a, is a fact. We have a, a, a word that we have a Catherine Hanley on the line, and she's trapped somewhere in the building. Catherine? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Jim Jensen here with Dana Todd and Frank Field. Where are you? Which building? 94th to World Trade. 94th floor. How many people are with you, Catherine? There are um, upwards of 100. Of 100. Now, what about the smoke conditions? How's the air there? Much better than earlier. But how was it earlier? It was fairly dense. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was frightening. You seem very calm and matter of fact about the whole thing. Well, I have to, uh, you know, how do you deal with such a thing? You have to try to calm down as much as you can. Mm -hmm. 
uh, you know, it was, it was frightening, most frightening when it first started happening. Mm -hmm. Catherine, did anybody come to your floor from the police, fire department, any rescue units, building people? Well, the uh, fireman just walked in about two minutes ago while I was holding on. And he said uh, what? Uh, no. Apparently everything seems to be under control here. They're, they're trying to take advantage of or, or uh, help the people that need it most. Okay. Are you the fireman? Are... No, I'm not. Oh. Well, no, this is Edward Adrian. Uh, well, Edward. Uh, but I, I have to tell you that knowing how the fire department works, they will go to the floors that are most vulnerable where the greatest problems are. Mm -hmm. In fact, in a high-rise fire, the firefighters attack the floor above and below where the fire is and the rest of the people stay put. Mm -hmm. Apparently, they are going through to the worst affected floors. The upper floors apparently in this fire, uh, that explosion below the building have been least affected, so the firefighters will get up there last. We heard earlier that they had a police sergeant go up to 102nd right. floor. I'm amused yeah. by the firemen coming in not even saying hello. <laughs> <laughs> that is so sick. Well, so well it's probably cutting so much on getting there, you know. But Catherine and Edward, you said that now the smoke condition is fine. You are able to breathe without problems? Yes. Okay. Were, were you told that they're going to try to fix the elevators? We, we have information that the, um, uh, the emergency folks have landed on a roof. They've got mechanics who will fix the elevators and try to get everybody down. Yes. Were you told that? No, I don't know that, but I do have to go. Thank you. Uh, you're, okay. you're welcome. Thank, thank you very much. Good luck. Good luck to her. So we don't know right now how many people remain trapped in those buildings and on what particular floors. We know the one officer made it through the 110th mm -hmm. floor, which is the top floor. But whether he stopped in other floors, we don't know. Right now on the telephone, uh, traffic okay. has been affected by oh. all of this, as Brian has shown us. Yeah. Tom's wire with shadow traffic is on the line. Tom, how are things going on the street? I really don't think it could be any worse, actually, oh. Dana. Serious situation, certainly. Uh, top line of my computer basically says it all. Lower Manhattan is closed, and uh, basically anything south of Canal Street just locked up tight from end to end at this point. Uh, southbound side of the FDR Drive is closed down at the South Ferry Tunnel. They're running emergency equipment only through that area. We've got West Street closed from Canal Canal Street down through the Battery Park as well. So just gridlock conditions down in Lower Manhattan at this point. We've still got the PATH train service out uh, going in through the World Trade Center. Now everything else on PATH apparently is doing okay, but uh, again, if you take PATH train service out of the World Trade Center, we're sending you over to Port Imperial Ferry or possibly the Jersey Transit buses instead as your alternate there. Dana? Tom? Yes. Excuse, excuse me, Go Jim Jensen here. Yes, sir. Uh, for people who want to get back to Brooklyn, I can't, have, do you have access to the Brooklyn Bridge, Williamsburg Bridge? Uh, certainly, the Lower East River crossings are open. Now, the inbound side of the Battery Tunnel is closed. Certainly, you're going to have, it's not going to be able to get down to the Battery Tunnel going outbound. So, uh, basically, the further north you go, the better off you're going to be. Uh, right now, Brooklyn Bridge is open going outbound. Same at the Manhattan and Williamsburg, but certainly going to find extensive is, delays there. Is PATH providing buses? Uh, basically, PATH, uh, the, now, PATH train service just is basically affected into the World Trade Center yes, at yes. this point. Uh, word is, we're just, uh, it's very sketchy information, certainly, now, Jim. Mm -hmm. uh, Port Imperial ferry a good idea of the Jersey Transit buses as an alternate to uh, path train service out of the World Trade. You and said again, imperial. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just want to say, Tom, again, it's important to tell people if you don't have to be down there. Don't. Don't oh, go certainly, down certainly. there. Certainly, with all the manpower down there and everything and it's all the emergency anyway. equipment, just keep it north. We'd like to get a report, Tom. Thank you very much uh, you, on the. Um, matter of the unknown numbers of people trapped down below in World Trade Center. Yeah, well, I've asked building the control room to call that 718-403-0261 number to see how many floors, how many people have called them through us, mm -hmm. and also to ask these folks how many more they think might be still in the building. A lot of them have been told to stand by and wait. And as our gentleman who the, the patrolman mm -hmm. landed on a roof said, if they can get those elevators repaired, and he doesn't know how long it'll right. take, they'll get them down. And I think that has to be done quickly, because once it gets dark, it gets to and be a little... Kind of hour. Reviewing uh, for a minute... Um, three so hours to go. Three hours at 12.18, there was an explosion, two explosions actually, the main one in building two, and the resulting uh, smoke poured through the whole building, hundreds of thousands of people trapped mm -hmm. for a while, uh, slowly making their way down the steps. Some of them are still doing that, and some of them remain trapped in their offices and all, on various floors. And we have, as I believe, two dead so far, two confirmed dead so far. And we know of one fireman having fallen five floors mm -hmm. to the ground. He's, being, he's at Beekman downtown, downtown Hospital. We have 150 injured, and that number will probably go way up. 
And before the final toll is known, Beekman alone has 106 of the injured, I believe. And as far as what Mary Murphy tells us, not many people have been released yet. No, no, they are still being treated. You know, these people, it was lunchtime. Uh, mm. Many people, yes, could have been out of the building, but these are uh, tall buildings. Thousands of people work there. And many of these people, yes, the firefighters did get to them, helped them get down. Took more than an hour walking down these smoky steps, stairwells. Right now on the telephone with us is Deborah Riccardi of the Red Cross. Deborah, how is the Red Cross helping out this afternoon? The Red, the Red Cross has set up a reception center to house people that um, have been evacuated from the World Trade Center. It's at the World Financial Center. Hello? Yes, yeah. okay. It, um, the reception center is at the World Financial Center across the street from the World Trade Center, and people are going there to get blankets and hot beverages and the reassurance that they need at this point. A lot of people came down, they had to just grab, take what was on their back so they didn't have coats coming out into the snow and the bitter cold. Absolutely, a lot of cold people and scared people, mm -hmm. and the Red Cross is trying to reassure them at the reception center. We're also sending disaster workers to the hospitals to follow up on the injuries, and we'll be trying to capture those names so we can feed them to the police who will get in contact with the next of kin of the injured people from the mm -hmm. explosion. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about people trapped at the PATH station? No, that I don't. Okay, okay. All right, Deborah, thank you very much uh, for joining us here. You're looking at pictures taken earlier from the World Trade Center area. People just having to stop in their tracks, in some cases, overcome by the smoke, not uh, having enough oxygen, not being able to yeah. breathe right. And then there's some confusion, naturally there's been considerable confusion, but about how this thing began. Right. One said, the earlier report was that a transformer blew. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a couple of hours later, we heard about a flash in the parking lot, and someone said maybe it was a car that blew. So we don't have any definite confirmation as just how all of this began. But the fire department officials we have spoken with have stayed with the transformer, transformer yes. as far as being the cause, uh, starting fires in a couple of the World Trade Center buildings. They're not sure if those were related. No. But you almost have to wonder that they, they were related. They were, yes. related. Uh, some people, at one point, we saw people, uh, you know, hanging clothing or blankets or something out from very high floors, trying to get attention. And of course, everybody was warned not to break windows. Do not break windows. So far, we have no reports of people being hurt by falling shards of glass. Fortunately, Which is good. Which is well, good. I think they began breaking the windows early on, yeah, particularly no. those floors yes. that were heavily involved. The, uh, it's the, understandable. Well, as, as the captain pointed out, sure. you don't break the glass because it might get yes. out on the street. Only in the utmost emergency. But if you're in there, you can understand why you do Well, it. when you're in there, you can't see, you can't breathe, right. and your only alternate uh, is to try to get some air. you got to do it. And, and that's the, the last thing you want to do. But if it has to be done, it has to be done. But Lisa, you don't want to do that. Frank, thank you. Lisa Castleman. Lisa? Lisa? Lisa, can you hear us? Okay, you're on. We're still here right outside the building. And as you can see, well, it's hardly settled down here. There's a quite a bit more order to the area than there was a little while ago. Just a moment ago, the American Red Cross arrived in very chilled, very cold, some dehydrated rescue people are there getting the refreshments that they need. Now, this area here that was full of number. people uh, about uh, 40 minutes ago getting the oxygen appears to have been cleared out at least for now. No one is entirely sure whether everybody who was trapped in the building is now out. And again, there were people underground at the time when the explosion took place, where the fire took place. There were at least two or three trapped. The officers we interviewed a little while ago said they weren't sure whether they were alive, whether they would be able to get those people out, but they were expecting any minute to go down and search for them again. But right now here, the whole entire block is still full of emergency vehicles. Um, it's certainly as far as we can see, and uh, most of the people apparently who needed most serious help have been transferred to hospitals. Many of these here are empty, but of course standing by should any other people be brought to them. Again, it's a little quieter here mm -hmm. now. Uh, we'll just stand by and see if we can bring you more a little bit later on. Jim. Lisa, thank you. And we've just heard from the fire department, and they're telling people who can hear us right now, if they can hear us, to stay where you are, that the fire department will get to you as soon as they can. There will be no problems. You have adequate air to breathe. Don't be breaking any more windows. Stay put. Remain as calm as you can. 
fire department assures you they will get to each and every one, no matter which floor you happen to be on. And they'll get there because they've been doing that kind of job all afternoon. Yeah, we also should tell them that not only are they coming from downstairs, but now they've landed yes. with helicopter rappelling down to the roof so they can go down. And we've already got reports right. of uh, police and firefighters working their way up and yes. down through the building. So Pinsel. most of them are okay. We were told uh, earlier, again, uh, just to confirm that the fire is out, the Port Authority says the fire is out. One time, it and was a four alarm, a four alarm fire. Yes. Yes, that's hope. Uh, let's go to Michelle Marsh, back in the newsroom. Michelle? All right. Thank you, Dana and Jim. Uh, we have this late word from the fire department. The fire is finally out, official word now that it is finally out, uh, but there still is, of course, plenty of smoke. Uh, sadly, officials say two people have died in this tragedy, and unknown a number of people remain trapped uh, this afternoon, but be assured that the evacuation continues. Fire officials are still reporting uh, an official number of 150 people hurt. New York Downtown Hospital now says it's treating more than 100 people for smoke inhalation and burns. Now, there, there was a report that one man fell out of a five-story window. Uh, reports uh, the man may have been a firefighter. Uh, we are trying to confirm that report for you. Twenty-seven people have been taken to St. Vincent's Hospital. Bellevue is also receiving the injured. Beth Israel and Cornell say they are on alert as well. Here's the latest information we have right now on traffic. All traffic is being diverted away from the Holland Tunnel to leave the area open for emergency service workers. The Brooklyn Battery Tunnel remains closed. It's unlikely it will reopen in time for the rush hour. It's being used for emergency vehicles. The Gowanus Expressway leading into the Prospect Expressway is closed to everyone but emergency vehicles. Traffic is also being diverted away from the Holland Tunnel to leave that area open for this emergency. The FDR Drive is closed south of Canal Street. The West Side Highway is closed in both directions south of Canal. There is no path service between the World Trade Center and New Jersey. All other path trains are running with major delays this afternoon. The numbers one and nine trains are bypassing Cortland Street Station. All other service is reportedly normal at this hour. West Street is closed from Canal Street to the Battery Tunnel. Now, we are told that four ferries are now running between the World Financial Center and Hoboken. As for city buses, all service has been suspended south of Park Row. There is no Staten Island Express bus service at all. If you need to go to Staten Island, take the ferry where you can pick up buses. Trains out of Penn Station are running on schedule, and officials say that they'll add more trains as volume dictates. Buses out of the Port Authority to New Jersey are running normally, we are told. Again, we are told more buses will be added as volume dictates. If you normally take a bus from the World Trade Center to New Jersey, you are being advised to go to the Port Authority, and you never know, you might have to walk that. The ferry between uh, Battery Park and Hoboken will run every 20 minutes until 4 o'clock. From 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock, it will run every 6 minutes. Uh, quickly, if you are trapped uh, in one of the towers, fire department says uh, call these numbers uh, to tell rescuers where you are. They are 212-999-2222 or 999 If you can't get through to either of those numbers, the Bronx dispatcher says you can call 718 718-403. 0261. Your message will be relayed to rescuers at the scene. Do not call 911. Uh, again, if you are in the towers, stay put. Try to remain calm. The evacuation continues. And that's the latest we have right now from the news. Thank, thank you. Thank you. What I'm wondering is yes. if any of you have the, maybe I heard it and have forgotten. For people who are involved in other emergencies in other parts of the city, since 911 mm -hmm. is jammed, what number do they use to call? They, help. Right. They had said earlier that's the only reason yeah, you but, should call, but if you can't get through. Yeah, if you're in the Bronx or and you have a heart problem or you have an automobile accident. No, I, I would assume you can still Why use 911 elsewhere. This specific number has been set up just to get the people who are trapped in the building. No, but I'm wondering if you call 911, you can't get through. What number should they call? Will that's I, what I, I don't, I don't, sure think, I don't think that problem exists, Jim. And if it well, is, I, I somebody will call us uh -huh. and help us. Let's go to uh, Channel 2's Lisa Councilman down on the street. Lisa. Yeah, Michelle. Well, the gentlemen here behind me were actually working on the elevators of the PATH train when this all happened. 
sir, what was it like? What happened to you? Well, I was running 48 car in B-Tower. All of a sudden, we heard this big explosion that shook the whole building and the elevator, hitting from side to side. Were you trapped in there for a while? For a while, yes. It was so powerful, it shook the elevator. We don't know. Everything went out. Powers, generators. It was terrible. And Never seen nothing like this. Were you in? Was any one of you inside an elevator car when it happened? No, I was physically outside the car. I was in the 294 level, which is considered B1 at World Trade Center 2. And it was mass hysteria. There was black smoke. There was no auxiliary. Backup lights. The power went out. Backup came out. Everything on B2. Everything on B2. Do you have any idea how long it was before you were able to come out of the building? We just got on now. Well, we, would, we, walk, we, walked, you know, we walked down pretty... Um, it was all right because the backup lights came on. But then after a while... Uh, the ceiling on the B4 level to the path fell down too downstairs, but they don't let nobody down there. Did you receive uh, oxygen when you came out? Yes. Yeah. Lisa? Lisa? Well, thank you very much for joining us. I'm glad you're okay. Yes? Lisa, one thing we learned from uh, a man named Vita, who Mary Murphy was speaking with, mm -hmm. that you heard somebody say B2, B4. Right. There are right. six Shops. levels, sub-level mm -hmm. of the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. So imagine being down there, and uh, there, again, we've heard about unknown number of people trapped possibly yeah. people could be trapped underground as Lisa, well. those gentlemen with whom you were just talking who were on the elevator they, are they still nearby or are they gone what was that last part of the question jim the men you were, with whom you were just talking who were on the elevators have they left you or are they still nearby are they gone they were actually able to come out themselves yeah they're, I know, they're, they're, they're not they're around now out. they're not available to you now no. Okay. No, I, I, they, they've gone on. Okay, okay. I was just wondering if they were working on the elevator, if they were yeah. passengers or whatever it was. Static, a uh, big problem Frankie, down there. Well, I wanted to ask Lisa whether there are still people coming out that it may not be as many as earlier today, but are they still bringing them out, or are they, uh, is the plan to l allow those folks in the upper levels to remain there until the elevators go back into action? Well, we're still getting phone calls. We're talking to people who are still on different floors, so obviously not all They're still out. standing by still waiting standing for by the fire and the fire to get them out. Okay. Frank, earlier uh, we talked about the series that you have done uh, year after year yes. on getting out alive of a, of a building if there is a fire. Let's go over some of the important things that people should remember. Well, the most important thing and the one that disturbs me at this point in this particular fire is the fact that uh, We've heard reports from people who say they heard a boom, suddenly they got smoke, no one ever said boo to them, and they, on their own volition, headed for the stairwell. Frank, Every floor this, should have an emergency. Maybe this can help you. I was just told that we have a graphic uh, showing the uh, site of the explosion and then the elevator shaft and where the smoke went up. Everybody we've spoken to has been talking about the smoke coming from the See, center here right here. of the building. Exactly. Well, what you're looking at is a chimney. Yes. In essence, when you have a fire, and the reason to keep doors closed is to prevent this from happening, but when you have an open shaft, and since the explosion blew the bottom out, uh, we can best uh, looking at the scene, all that smoke will simply go up the flue. It blew the heart out. So that's yeah. right. And so all this thick, dense smoke will go up either stairwells or up the elevator shaft. Mm -hmm. And the object here in, in normally in a high-rise or in an office building, since these are wide open spaces, not like high-rise apartments that are separate little cubbies where you can stay confined in an area and still mm -hmm. breathe, these are wide open spaces. Smoke will spread up and out and fill the building Fortunately. instantly. Yeah, and, and so in this kind of a situation, you have to get out as quickly as you can. If you can't, you have to stay. It, as we pointed out, it's a very tough job going down a hundred stories. It, it's not an in easy dark. thing. In, in the dark, dark in and the with smoke. smoke. So you, your best bet is the fire department's there almost instantly and wait for help. And that's what the fire department's been saying. All those who are trapped, if you can stay there, if it isn't totally impenetrable, you, 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 you can continue breathing, get low, get near an area where there's air, remain in that site. We'll be there shortly. And we already know that we've got men who've landed on a roof via helicopter, we have uh, police who have managed to work their way up to the top of the building mm -hmm. so that they know where most people Frank, are now. We have on the line Dr. Stephen Lamb, uh, who's been, I guess, assisting in the treatment of the smoke victims. Dr. Lamb?